everyone, my name is Austin Hannum, and this is what's in my bag for the 2019 season. I'm gonna go ahead and go putters, mid ranges, fairways, and then the high speed drivers. So I'm gonna start with my putting putters. Um, I got two putting putters. Um, I chose the Jawbreaker Challenger SS's. Um, I just like these because they're they're super glidey, um, they're beadless, and they're just really comfortable to me. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of, I go off the feel. <clears throat> uh, next up we got a magnet, very old. Um, I don't even know how old this disc is, but uh, this is for more of like a, like if I get in the woods, I'll be throwing this a lot and kind of longer, longer jump putts. Um, if there's no wind, I like to kind of just spin this towards the basket and try to put it in. And then we got two zones. I got one ESP zone and one jawbreaker. Um, this disc is probably one of my favorites in the Discraft lineup. Uh, I like to throw a lot of sidearms with this disc, the ESP one. Um, backhands, I usually like the jawbreaker. I uh, want to throw it hard and with a little hyzer, and it'll just pop up flat and go really straight for me. So definitely check out the zone. Um, that's all for my putters. Um, right now I got four mid-ranges in the bag. Um, start off with the Z-Buzz. Um, the Buzz is definitely my favorite mid-range I've ever thrown. Um, buzzes are just super straight and they go wherever you throw them, what, whatever angle you put them on. That's, uh, yeah. And then I got the first run buzz um this disc is awesome i uh it actually took the place of the comet because it's just so old and beat up i you know i throw it flat and it just kind of holds over and it's just perfect for what i need it for um uh third is this ace race archer um this is another one that's going to be really good in the woods i uh I really like to use it for jump putts from like 100 feet. I uh, like to jump putt the archer and just kind of spin it again towards the basket. And then lastly is this Big Z drone. Um, the drone is definitely my f this an awesome disc. This hasn't been in my bag for six years. Um, definitely a very special disc to me. Um, it'll probably be in my bag for a very long time. Next, I'll go with my fairway drivers. We got five of them. Um, start out with the Raptor. Uh, this disc is awesome for sidearms. Uh, I don't really backhand it a whole lot. Um, but yeah, it's just very, it's not very deep, so it's just a very good feel in the hand for the sidearm. It's real stable. I, I like to maneuver it uh, through like the woods and stuff too. Um, next is the Predator. This is probably my favorite fairway driver. Uh, I like to throw, this thing is very stable. Um, I like to throw it flat with a little Anheuser. Um, I like to get it kind of high too, so just let it work its flight really good. Um, but yeah, you definitely check out the Z Predator. Next up is the Big Z Vulture. Um, this disc is really good for just like throwing them kind of really hard on hyzer and it'll just get up and just have a consistent straight flight. And then it'll obviously finish left. Uh, next is the Glow Stalker. Um, this is kind of just like a longer buzz for me. Um, very straight with a little finish to the right. Um, I won't be throwing this much out here in Arizona, but uh, this is definitely a very good disc later on in the season when we get to the woods. And then also the Undertaker. Um, this disc is pretty similar to the Stalker. I, uh, it's a little more stable for me. I don't know if it's the, the plastics or whatever, but I like to throw this disc on some hyzer and it'll come up flat for a while and then it'll just finish left at the very end. So this is a pretty good disc. 
All right, lastly, we're gonna get into the distance drivers. I have five of these. We have yeah, four forces. Um, first up is the Nuco S, though. Um, this disc has been awesome for me early in the season. Um, it's been a little windy, so I mainly use this for the sidearms. I like to throw them really low with a little Anheuser and just watch them just, yeah, do its thing. Uh, very stable. Um, would highly recommend to have one of these in the bag. Uh, next up is the Z Force. This is one of the very early runs of the Force. Uh, very pop top and uh, very, very stable. Uh, I like to throw this disc really hard with a little Anheuser and just let it pan out and land with Heiser. Next up is the Z Force. This one's interesting. It's got the Eric McCabe stamp on it. Um, I believe it was his disc, but this disc is perfect for my, I like to, this is my sidearm disc. I like to throw it really low with a little Anheuser to flat and it will always finish to the right. This, so this disc is one of my main go-to drivers for sidearms. Uh, next up is the Z Force. It's a newer run of the Z Force. Um, it's got like a really pearly bottom here. Um, very overstable. This disc will be used a lot for just hyzers and you know, just flat shots that need to finish left. Um, and now, lastly, is the ESP Force. This is my go to for distance shots for sidearm and backhand. Um, I like to throw it flat and just let it turn and it always finishes left, but yeah, this is a this is my go-to for my distance shots. And that is all that's in my bag. Um, if you would like to check out any of these discs, go to discraft.com. Um, if you have any questions and see me on the course, then yeah, come up and ask. Thank you. Hello everybody and welcome to the 2019 Discraft Great Lakes Open. I'm Paul Uliberry. I'm joined by Marty Copley and we're giving you live commentary for yeah for this tournament. Let's get straight to the action. Good morning everyone and welcome to the 2019 and Great Lakes Open no, presented by Discraft. We're now ready for a 9 a.m. pairing. Team first, from Muskegon, Michigan, Liz Carcipian. Here's Liz, giving it a nice little turnover. An interesting feature that they actually added to this whole Marty is they, they added that OB Gene to the left. Um, from Emporia, Kansas. And right, actually. Paige Bierkes! <laughs> Which definitely adds some new elements to the course. I know that they wanted to make it harder, especially after all the good play last year. Team next, from Caldwell, Idaho, Sarah Holcomb! And Holcomb actually being the defending champion from last year, so we definitely expect her to have some some good play here today. This, you know, this course really suits up well for her game, especially being sidearm dominant, especially in hole one right here. I think that's the T-pad a little shorter. It's down to 477 feet versus 605 feet for the men. That's right, yeah. 
Oh, that's a good. Team next from San Shot Diego, hunter. California, Vanessa Van Dyken. And Vanessa's been definitely making, you know, her game shown on these live on these live coverages. She's been playing very well. Over the last year, she's really known for you know her really her really good putting, and this <laughs> and this looks like a really great tee shot. And that's going to be the best tee shot of the group. Should be happy with that. Good luck, everyone. Have fun. I practice a lot. It's a vice, an escape from stress, from work. It's my chance to just get away during the week. It's like meeting up with an old friend, you know? I'll never get tired of that sound. Disc golf is a relatively young sport, but its popularity makes it one of the fastest growing pastimes in the world. The PDGA is a not-for-profit, worldwide player organization dedicated to promoting the sport. Like a long drive off the tee, disc golf is soaring. So don't just be a witness to disc golf's explosive growth, be a part of it. Join the PDGA. And as they walk down to their to their lies, yeah, the, the course definitely changed a little bit this year, Marty. But I expect they're they're going to be able to navigate their way through this with no problems. Um, you know, checking at the leaderboard already, there's some good scores coming in. No surprise from Paige being four through five. Uh, what do you what do you expect will happen? You know, in the next few holes to come with like Holcomb and and being like you know already kind of behind. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Um, and I was actually curious from your perspective. When you come out of the gate at the beginning of a tournament, do you find yourself wanting to be more aggressive or more conservative? Yeah, it, it was, that's good. That's a good question because it, it all depends on, you know, you looking at the scores and somebody before you, you know, seven through seven, six through seven or something like that, you definitely understand that there's scoring conditions. But I think what what happens is you have to kind of shut all that off and try to, you know, try to birdie as many holes as possible. Right. Depends on, you know, how you you handle that kind of pressure and stuff as Paige lines up um, her approach. She, she ended up being safe. Um, it's actually pretty forgiving to that left side. I think um, you would really have to throw an errant tee shot to, to be really OB, but she still has quite a ways to go. And she, she yeah, she navigates that yeah. up shot perfectly um and par on this hole's you know par on this hole's good and liz is actually native to michigan and been playing a very long time i was looking at some stats uh from the pdga and she um you know has around 70 wins uh, 200 events played or something but mostly in michigan but that's you know that's almost winning half the tournament so she's no stranger to the winner's circle i expect her to you know put together a really good round today she's been around for a little while definitely an experienced player um predominantly back in uh very good putter in the circle so interesting she missed this tournament last year uh, she was given birth to her son that just turned one. Oh, happy birthday as you know this like like i had mentioned before i think sarah has a really good shot of, of making a run at another title here uh, i think that the course really sets up well for her game i mean um left to right shots very controlled they've added ob so that's going to be an important part And Vanessa got that, you know,
turned over into a perfect angle. It was able to just kind of drift all the way to the right, and she might have even broke into circle two there, which is a really great shot. I mean, it's a completely blind shot from the tee, and it's extremely downhill, so gravity can really take away and, and push their disc to the left, but she was able to, to get a good angle on this one. And one thing, you know, I had mentioned before is she's a really good putter, Especially from distance, she you know she breezes the basket right there. Really scared it, and it looks like they're all going to be able to uh, to tap in pretty much for for pars. I, I don't think anybody was really even outside twenty feet here, except for um, Liz. So she gets her first tester putt of the day. Yeah, and that's always good. You know, I actually always like like a, about a twenty to twenty five footer for the first putt of the day whether I make it or miss it, you know, you really get to see like your tendencies for the rest of the round. Beautiful. If, and if her tendencies to put it right in the middle, it's going to be a good round. <laughs> no, but if I like miss or something that you really get to see your miss for the day, you know, and then sometimes it'll save you for later on in the round. And just, you know, if you miss it left, you miss it right. You can fix it right away and then get on with it. And a bunch of pars. Great weather, though. Looks like they got um, blessed with some really good weather out there. You can hear the birds chirping. Everybody's loving it. Beautiful out there. Shut up, ladies. And here we go into hole two, 415 feet, but this is going to be extremely uphill. Um, really what, you, what you're going to see from, from them is just try to throw something as straight as possible and as far as possible without going left or right. That's going to be your trouble is once you get off the fairway here, as you can see, it's very tight. But once you get off the fairway, it'll just be like kind of on even footing and, and things like that. And then it's extremely uphill. So you almost have to be aiming straight up. So run up is almost not an option once you get up there on the, once you get up there on the slope. So I think uh, the tee shot's crucial for, for these women. Yeah, that hill has 76 feet of elevation gain. So that really is gonna make that 415 play much longer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, coming, you know, coming into this tournament, it's interesting. They have a two week turnaround from the last tournament at Ledgestone. Right. And so, uh, also, people are kind of looking forward to the European um, trip, you know, as far as like the top uh, athletes in the game. So I'm curious to see if anybody else kind of feels like they have a chance, you know, because mm -hmm. obviously right. it's been a two horse race, you know, for years. But Sarah Holcomb, the defending champion, a um, bunch of great locals. Vanessa has been playing really good. Paige, obviously, the defending world champion. We got a lot of storylines here that look really good for us, so I'm interested to see how how things shake up. And um, we look at the leaderboard; no surprise to see Paige already up there. You know, four down through six holes. Yeah. I've got a great start. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it fits. Oh, shit. As uh, some good citizenship there, as uh, I think that was uh, Sarah's boyfriend cleaning off the tea pad for him, <laughs> making sure they're not going to be slipping or anything as Liz lines up this this shot. And this is a really flippy, look like Avenger SS possibly. And that was a beautiful shot right yeah. up the middle. I mean, a lot of trust to be able to, you know, trust that it's not gonna, you know, get stable and go to the left there. She ends up right, like I said, right in the middle. And that should be fairly na uh, easy to navigate up there to the basket. This course definitely has a lot of natural OB yeah, that yeah, it's definitely what from. it's known for, and it's actually gotten a little bit softer over the years. Um, 
I remember when I first started playing here, it was it was probably triple. Every hole was kind of like to the left, as you see up there. As Paige, Paige throws a really great turnover up there. And Sarah's going to line up. What do you think? She's going to play a turnover as well, or you think she'll just throw a little she hyzer? It. Yep, she flexes it. Good call. Very good. back that could be trouble i think it's gonna hold on possibly so it's too deep yeah too i deep. mean once you get over to where those branches are kind of sticking out it's really tough to kind of get out but where she is you know i think she'll be able to do like a patent pending or even stand still you know even if you're in the fairway i feel like you're gonna have to do a standstill up the hill you right. know because the run-ups were really not even an option and again joining us uh here in the booth on for anybody out there who missed our intro this is marty copley he's a, a native arizona arizonian with me and uh we're just really lucky to have you and thank you for for coming and, jo and joining us and can't wait to watch this coverage with Thanks. you and bring it to the world so i'm um, excited to be here and yeah. looking forward to watching and talking disc golf with you all weekend yeah absolutely he will be joining us for all the live uh feed this 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 weekend I can throw this disc around the world in one shot. Never play disc golf too far into the jungle. There may be cheetahs. Someone on your card can't recall if they threw a six or a seven. It was probably an eight. See? Stay getting birdies, my friends. What do you think flatness and stiffness on this? Somewhat flat, neutral stiffness. This is a good disc right here. And as we saw, Van Vanessa kind of turned that out. Uh... No, she had, she didn't really turn it over. I mean, she just kind of pulled the hyzer kind of into the woods right there. But it, she was a little further in there than I thought. But still, I think she's far enough to where if she's able to get the height on this, you know, mm -hmm. I'm worried about those branches, but she's able to get the height she'll be able to get all the way up the hill. The one thing that's hard to do is to make sure not to turn it over a little much like that. See how she didn't get the height there. And once you throw turnover and you don't have a lot of height, it gets buried into the hillside. I think it's, it's a, a good effort though. From yeah, tough line. yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> kind of a, a little bit of a misconception is when people are aiming uphill, they really try to get that Anheuser you know mm -hmm. going up the hill because when when you're on flat surface and hyzer you know gets you the most distance but sometimes hyzer is an easier way to navigate your way up a hill interesting because it's not turning into the earth you know right. and it's able to push when you hyzer they call it a, a flip up because it's moving it from the ground up and so it's able to kind of like push up the hill a bit more Yeah, and, and seeing Sarah being right here, she actually is going to try this run up. Um, and it and you can see you can see the basket on the top of the hill there, but it's still far, you know. And that was a good shot. She scares the basket even. Thank you to Keen Footwear, as we can see, the nice uh, uh, banners and going around the green right there. Those are looking really good. Thank you to Keen. Thank you to all the sponsors, Discraft. Um, I saw Next Gen on one of the on the high rise there, which is uh, something we didn't talk about. Is once you navigate your way up the hill to the top, then you have to deal with, you know, one of the high rise baskets here, Just and that's going to be kind of tough. Yeah.
Hey everyone, Terry Miller, the Disc Golf Guy, checking in here on hole number eight. We've caught up with Paige Pierce's group. Paige obviously off to this very hot start. She is four down through the first seven holes. She got the first four holes and has parred the last three. Look to be a pretty clean shot here on hole number eight. Kona Panis, on the other hand, went with the high hyzer route. It kicked off a tree on that right side and went into some nasty rough on the left. I believe they call that shul here in Michigan. We're going to continue to check in with this card and follow some of the action from here and beyond. We'll see you guys back in the booth. Paige trying to get a good, good footing here. I think this is her third throw. She gives that one a little bit. I mean, I think she turned it over a little bit uh, on her second shot there and didn't quite get it up the hill. And that's the big thing about hole two is is really committing to going straight up, you know, because if you do a run up, your your tendencies is to throw you know shoulder height about, and and when you're um, running uphill, it's really tough to get it up as we see you know this this hole's only 400 what was it 417 feet i believe and um or something like that under 450 feet i know that and and for them to as vanessa flies by flies by the basket there she really gave that one an aggressive run and that one could cost her because she's got a, a nice little 25 30 footer back and on a high rise that's tough it that's is. playing more like 40 foot yeah. Let's see if Liz can save this one. Oh, just a bit low there. It's a good bit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, again, she she was in you know tall shrubbery there, and you gotta aim so high to get up to that basket. You're definitely right. I'm a, a flatland thrower and recently played up in Flagstaff and learned that really quick the hard way. You got to actually throw like you're throwing at the top of the trees to get it to go the elevation that you want it to go. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely a learned a learned skill for sure. If you're if you're used to, you know, you have it's interesting. You have your your home course and you're used to certain shots and in order for your game to travel like a lot of these um, great professionals do and and to be able to take your game and have you know diverse shots and and things it's really it's really a tough skill to you know to really uh hone in as vanessa lines us up and mm. she misses again and this mm. could go down the hill this i mean yeah. it's good to be aggressive obviously but on on these on these high rises it's it's just especially you know, somebody with a really flat, aggressive putt like her. It can definitely get you into trouble. We have all done what she just did. Oh, yeah. And that's not going to be a good start for her. I mean, um, she's definitely not looking for a score like that, especially, you know, looking at the scoreboard and seeing some really good play coming from the rest of the – FPO field that that one hurts because this is one of the more gettable holes. Good that, point. That's a good start for Sarah. I mean, taking par on the first hole, first holes, you know, we're going to, you're not going to see a lot of twos. And then for her to get right on track, you know, that's almost a perfect start. Just tapping in. Few pars. And this is hole three. This one's going to be 590 feet down the hill. And as the drone flies here, you can see the left and the right super tight fairway. And we're flying over our pad for this round right now. As you can see to the right, super thick rough, don't ever go right. 
and then left a new feature this year is once you get over that little hill to the left there it's actually out of bounds so there is some um there's some teeth now to the left there and they're going to be wanting to land a bit shorter from where the drone is right now and then you know pitch up about 300 feet and it's interesting because you can't really see the elevation it's extremely downhill yeah. extremely downhill and then once you get to that spot where you can see like the rough in the middle of the fairway it's actually uphill then mm. so it goes down and then you have to actually throw up so it's a really cool hole uh, again the name the name to your game plan on this course is stay in the fairway because once you get off it's it's just tricky footing you know even when you go left you can see right here it's tough to really with all the green grass to see the slope but you can see kind of the slope from on the on the left side of the fairway there it's probably five five foot high or something that little ridge so i believe we're on a backup let's go to uh let's go to some action here john actually let's wait on that for a little bit and uh as we see the camera man make his way down the hill along with um the group to to their team had to assess their next shot Looks like we have a, pl a player who kind of got hemmed up there, but this is actually a good shot because you can see once you get off the fairway, Marty, how tall that rough is. Yeah. I mean, you know, during her swing, during her swing right there, there was a branch, you know, so that's what four foot high of rough. And that was our first really glimpse of, of how tough it is once you get off the fairway. I mean, it's, it's extreme. And this is a, another good shot of seeing the elevation. You can see those shadows down there. Um, and you can see, so if you look to the right of where Sarah is right now, before she throws this tee shot, if you look to the right, that slope to the right goes down to the fairway and that hill you know, as she's flying over it right now, it's a good five foot above them. That's right about where you want to be. I think she went off the fairway. Oh, did she? Yeah, I think she actually um, went over that ridge, which is safe. I mean, but you can pretty much, you have to pitch straight back out. I mean, you might be able to gain like 150 feet from there, but that, that takes birdie out of play for her. Okay. I kind of want, I don't want to see a shot land on one of these hills sides, but I kind of want one at the same time, just so we can see how high it is, you know, cause it's so deceiving from up here, from this camera view of, of how tough that slope is to the left. This thing needs to hurry as well. Stable. And that got extremely lucky, gets kick, a nice kick to the fairway. And you can see, I think, Marty, you can see the, um these women kind of shy away from that left side and that out of bounds yeah it, the that new ob definitely is changing this hole for sure as uh as some have mentioned they've tried to paul proof the course a little bit yeah good luck with that <laughs> as she turns this one over this is perfect oh man she got a hold of that one she's asking for it to just go and that's nice. perfect i mean that's a that's a exactly where you want to be let's see if vanessa can bounce back after that last hole and i as i was looking at the whole preview um i saw the o ob line it kind of kind of really doesn't do it justice it's actually further off that ridge so if they go left and they're on that ridge that's probably out of bounds okay once you get past a certain point And I think that one went off to the right as well um, into that tree line. What do you think, Platinus and Stiffness, on this? Somewhere.
somewhat flat, neutral stiffness. This is a good disc right here. Two more. Danny, this is the sick one. Dude, I gotta get through all these today. Cheers to a good day, gentlemen. Cheers. Cheers. And here's Liz. It looked like she was just kind of placing that to the to the fat of the fairway, um, just to make sure she gets par. I mean, that's a that's a pretty far shot from where she was. She's still looking at 320 to 350 feet up that hill, and you know you add that 20 foot, probably to 20 to 15 foot of elevation, and that's playing a good 50 feet further. And oh, here, perfect. This is exactly what I wanted uh, everybody to see is as she steps up to her lie here, obviously she's not going to be able to take a run up, but look at the hill next to her. I mean, that's as tall, uh, um, about as tall as she is. So, so if you land on the side of that hill right there, you know, as you're looking from the tee pad view down, it doesn't look like much, but once you get down here, I mean, that's it. Um, very steep slope right there with high grass she tries her she tries to do the run up there turns it over again though and i don't know i she, she'll probably be fine from there so she made the correct um mistake by pulling it a bit right instead of you know leaving it left to that out of bounds line as the spotter runs over um, to get a, a good mark on where Vanessa's shot went. And thank you to all the spotters and volunteers for all of these tournaments. Without you guys, we got nothing. Honestly, we got nothing. That's a great shot from Sarah. Oh, perfect. She's already displaying that power she has, you know. Um, I believe she has a little bit more power than almost everybody on the card. Maybe Paige and her are pretty close. Mm -hmm. But yeah. she's able to definitely, you know, especially with that the sidearm that she possesses, she's able to kind of um, shorten a lot of these holes up and shorten a lot of the courses up that she plays. Definitely a great asset to have. As I don't even think we've made it to Paige's drive, which was absolutely perfect. I mean, she made it all the way to that, almost the rough area, which is all of 430 feet down that hill. Wow, that's a bomb. Yeah. That's a bomb. Especially out of such a tiny frame. Yep, that was really good. And... And as you can see that, you know, I keep bringing it up, but this course has so much elevation up and down, up and down, and she can't even see where the basket is from where she is right there, you know, and it, and that's a beautiful shot from her, but she can't even see. So she's throwing a blind shot. Um, she has to get the nose up because, you know, she has to clear the hillside. So right. it's not easy, even though she's only 200 feet away. 
still not easy, but she makes it look easy. And Vanessa, as we can see the spotter come out of there, it looks like he found Vanessa's shot and she's going to have to go into scramble gears here and see if she can get out of there and save this par. Another great look at the rough that this course possesses. I mean, that's over five foot of rough. You can barely see her in there. Yeah. She looks like she might have found a hole. Yeah. Like in tomahawk or maybe a little flexi forehand. Yeah, I think I think that's exactly what she's gonna do. A little flexi forehand. Gotta be careful that it doesn't roll. Well done. Yeah, that'll give her a putt to save that par. She needs it, especially after the mishap she had on the last hole. She needs it. She needs, you know, to knock one of these putts down to regain that confidence. Yeah. Get her back on track. Liz approach. That's that's good as well. <clears throat> you know, Liz has one of those games. Super consistent. Um. I would say leaning toward conservative, you know, and I think that's a product of, uh, you know, where you play. I think um, being from Michigan, you know, there's a lot of courses, uh, lots of woods, lots of rough. Uh, you know, we had mentioned that she's almost won half the tournament she's played in. Wow. So um, it's an impressive staff. It's impressive for sure. But at, when you look at a player like that, who, who wins a lot in their area, I think that most of their games are leaning towards that conservative play because, you know, they know their games, they know how to win. Mm -hmm. And then when um, it's, it's nice to be able to have somebody of her caliber um, featured on one of these cards. So you can really see how she picks apart courses compared to like, you know, even a, a Birkus or a Hokum who are very aggressive players, mm -hmm. you know, and so I, I'm interested to see how that game plan pays off on a, on a course like this. A little bit low, but that was closer. I mean, she didn't, she didn't, she didn't yank that one right like she did on the last few. I mean, it definitely you want to make that putt, but we're talking three, four inches is all she missed there. Really good putt. Sounds That's like, another birdie. Sounds like a very good out of the gate. Nice. You know, I like to do comparisons um, from di division to division, and she reminds me a lot like a like an Andrew Fish, you know, mm -hmm. somebody who's used to winning, like I said, in, in, in the area that they're from and just really sticking to their game plan and executing and it's, it, yeah. Hole four, 508 foot. And really the trick is, obviously on every hole, <laughs> it's interesting for me to say, oh, the trick is, uh, the trick is to be in the fairway on every hole in every golf course ever. So <laughs> that's the trick here, Marty. But, but you want to land somewhere in, in this tree line, right, right here. And once you land anywhere in this tree line, you're going to have low ceiling unless you beat this tree right here. You're going to have a low ceiling up this hill again, elevation, elevation, elevation on this course. And as you can see, once this drone 
slowly <laughs> gets up this hill, you'll be able to see the basket right there up on another hill um, and slope right in front of it, slope to right behind it. So the drive to get anywhere in those trees. And then if you have a shot even up there, you have to have a lot of touch in order to make it stick. And then you're going to have a tough putt unless you're absolutely based. So then for the elevation game, this hole has another 20 feet of elevation gain. Yeah, 20. I mean, that, and that's a lot. That's straight uphill. Sarah coming off two birdies right on pace. I mean, that's a great pace. Two out of three, you know, at that point you get, let's say you miss one, you miss another one, you get two more, you're on a good pace, you know, at that point. And that's, and that's, yep. that's what you want. Even, you know, that kind of gives you a buffer to where you can miss three, four holes in a row and still be fine. So she gets a little bit right there. I, it's it's going to be tough for anybody to be able to throw a drive far enough to get past these trees in order to have a perfect look. You're going to have to, in, in order for them to do that, they're going to have to beat that first kind of bushy pine right there. And then you kind of got to get lucky through those through those branches right there. I mean, that's a great drive, but still, you know, she's going to have – it's going to be like a, a roll the dice guessing game to see if she even has a shot up up that hill. I mean, this hole is extremely hard. It's going to be really tough with those low branches and trying to get it up the hill. And I think we're going to see Liz throw roller here. Oh. Well, that was her Avenger SS. And that was good. She yeah. actually landed on the right side of the fairway there, and that's going to open up um, – that's going to open up the fairway for her to kind of throw the next one to the base of the hill, I'm guessing, and then kind of throw her way up. And that's, and that's a product of her really, I think, being familiar with this yep. course. Yep. Well, local knowledge. This looks nice. That's good. There you go. And that's a great, you know, back to Liz's um, shot. I think that was a great idea to throw the roller to make sure to get under those branches, mm -hmm. you know, just to kind of penetrate up the fairway. Yeah, take them out of play. I don't know. Should I be? I don't know. Okay. Well, we're here. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, checking in after we just watched them play. Uh, hole number nine here. Paige Pierce, we saw in the previous hole, she cards her first blemish of the day. She takes a bogey on the previous hole. Then she steps up to this uphill shot. I believe it's 425 and puts it inside circle two. Not many women have even the opportunity to do that. Paige Pierce then draws metal from about 45 feet, just a bit short and left almost negating that previous bogey that she took. As you saw, she's got a smile on her face. Things are still going well. We're gonna move over to the next hole, the one hole that we saw Paul McBeth miss last year when he was in route to his 1800. I believe the women do have a slightly shorter tee. We'll check in, we'll be back in a moment. Back to you guys in the booth. Them. Yeah, 
Sarah so got off the fairway a bit there and you can see that high grass again as soon as you're off the fairway I mean you know she wants to throw a hyzer and you can see her you know practicing right there and being like well you know that's definitely going to change her stroke yep and with her low stroke she's definitely going to be weed whacking yeah she is for sure oh yes she does solid effort though from a tough fly yeah i mean that's going to get her in position and um it's definitely the the weeds right there are going to be a little bit lower after that shot <laughs> And Liz got that a bit turned over, and she's going to be in a similar lie, but luckily Sarah helped her out on the previous shot. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to need to throw turnover. And it's, you know, it's this is tough because it looks like she might be going with a little bit more of an aggressive line high. Oh, yeah. And if she gets off the fairway again, Again, I'm not sure where that landed. Not too bad. It looked like she got up there. She did. Wow. She did. And that's, that's again, that's a product of knowing her environment, like you said, and, and being a local and thinking, okay, if I can push up the fairway. And that's actually a lot of the way I like to play. I, I'm not a big, you know, throw it to the base and then throw, throw the upshot like 100 feet because my upshot game from about that distance isn't really that great. And so I can, you know, I can leave it to 20, 25 feet. So I always go hard. <laughs> you know, I want to get it within 100 feet. And then I'm pretty, I'm, you know, I feel a little bit more comfortable inside 100 feet. So maybe um, that's what she was thinking there. But that ended up being, I bet you she's inside circle two. A great shot. An uphill turnover like that. That's a wonderful result for her. Okay, she gets a little foliage. That was a good shot. And that could be she's a little disappointed with that but i mean what else is she supposed to do she's had a low ceiling there mm -hmm. you know as we mentioned on the t-pad like it's tough to get in front of those trees even if you throw what seems to be a perfect shot you're gonna have a low ceiling we saw all the ladies kind of have trouble um to get it high enough first of all i mean liz and sir both were off the fairway liz you know tried to throw that big turnover and that and got a good result from it but easily could have hit something and been back here by by sarah and in the rough so it's right. just a tough hole this should play to sarah's strengths right here touch it up there yes let up And they're gonna make their way up uh, to find. I think I think they're gonna be looking for Liz's lie here, and then they're gonna realize that it's all the way up there. Further than Paige is shot. Paige does that a lot. She actually does this running jump putt. And we saw that at the beginning of the year in the playoff at, at uh, you know, on the national tour is we sh saw her do this running jump putt from like 80 feet in the playoff and make it. Beautiful. Um, yeah, so she's she likes doing that, and she's very good at it. Let's just lays it up. Be able to get her apart from there. Yeah, and I think that was in her that was her plan, you know, because let's say she is a super aggressive player. Then she throws big turnover, she's gonna be running that, you know? And so I think that's her game plan is get it up far enough to where then I can have easier layup instead of throwing it to the base and having kind of a tricky upshot. I mean, that's what I, I think that was her plan all along. Cause that's what like I said, that's what I would have done. <laughs> And Vanessa switching to straddle now. Yeah. And pulls it right again. Still has not just gotten in sync with her game this morning. 
yeah, I, I mean, it's tough to go from high rise, normal basket height, high rise, normal basket height. And one thing people don't understand is when you're putting up, it's a completely different stroke. Sure. And that's not something you can practice a lot, you know, which was a good feature that the Pro Tour added this year was adding a high rise for us to practice on before, um, you know, before our rounds because nice it's a compl- it's a completely different stroke. I mean, normally you're never reaching above your shoulder. And then whenever you have a high rise, you're reaching way above your shoulder, especially on these high slopes. And as she makes that one, makes a nice correction. But once you lift up, your tendency is to miss right, you know, yep. because you're extending a little bit more instead of having that, you know, comfortable stroke. And we see that, um, we see that a lot right at circle's edge. It's really rare that you see anybody miss left on, on the high rise one at about 30 feet or something, because you have to really pop it to get it up there. Another par. Nice. Hole five, 300 feet. This one's perfectly flat. Just kidding. It's straight uphill. And and this is a trick. This is a super tricky hole. You can see like this path right here as the drone flies up, up the hill. You have this tiniest of fairways right here that you're going to try to get through. And then you have to throw If you get up through that, through that gap, which is a big if, you have to have a slight turn that kind of slides up to this basket right here. So one of the tight, I'm going to definitely say the tighter fairway on the course. And I think the most important thing on this hole is to keep it up and turned over. And then once you clear the hill, as we go to another camera and another group, um, here's Paige lining up about a 12 footer, should be no problem. Couple tap ins, some good sportsmanship. Here you go. Probably checking to see if she marked her disc, <laughs> <laughs> making sure we're all legal out there. But yeah, this whole, um, as they throw up this hill, it's a tiny, tiny fairway. And you can't even, it really, really, you're just thinking if I, height, height is the most important thing. Because once you get the right height, then good things happen. You know, hit, trying to hit a fairway like that, I think when your focus is on hitting, hitting that sliver of an opening, it can kind of hurt you in different areas. So when I when I see holes like this I, I think a height because then you can get lucky and kind of go towards the hole or something like that to where if you don't have the right angle see she misses the, the the gap is a little bit tighter than that but she misses a little bit there and that's going to be good because she had what did she have she had the right height right right so she was able to get up that hill that kind of place nice for her forehand too she's been leaning on that orange insanity all day that one catches that left tree and then kind of pushes her to the to the left and that it looks like okay no problem but once you let once we get to her lie you're gonna see that i mean it's gonna be tough for her to get a par from there Liz through her buzz but an early tree. And that's going to be tough from there. I mean. And I I didn't even think about um, that tree on the right. I didn't see that in the flyby. But that's definitely the one you want to beat is that white tree on the right. If you can get around that, 
that's really the only trouble right off the bat. And this is good. Looks good. Perfect height too. Oh, late tree. But that's fine. Once you get up up onto the hill, you'll be able to throw some sort of upshot to the basket because it's only 80 feet or something. Right, you should be able to get up and, and down from five. there. They need to mark up that hole. The 2019 United States Amateur Match Play Championship continues with our doubles bracket. Local doubles qualifier match play brackets will be held throughout the United States and Canada through July and August. The championship bracket will be hosted in Emporia, Kansas on September 27th through the 29th. In the players pack, each player on the teams will receive a Dynamic Disc Biofusion Raider and a Latitude 264 Gold Burst Pioneer. Make sure you go to DiscGolfMatchPlay.com for more information for the tournament directors and for the players. We can't wait to see you out here in Emporia, Kansas for the championships. And here we go. Liz is all the way down the hill to the left there. So, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like I, I'm repeating myself because I am. It's the elevation on this course is, is really the tricky part. She's all the way down this hill. She's looking at 10 feet of elevation up the hill, and then she has to navigate through, you know, 100 trees. This is really difficult. And... Yeah, she gets up the hill, but then she hits a late tree, and she's going to be looking at outside the circle, you know, outside circle one there. Paige, you can see till, uh, in just a second, you'll be able to see where um, Paige's shot ended up as well, and she's going to be probably in a little better position than, than Liz was, but she even has to walk up you know, to see the basket and yeah. where it is. So you got to think one, <laughs> it's funny because once you get down a hill like that, you have to clear the hill. Then once you clear the hill, if the basket is 80 feet past that crest, your disc is already going straight up the hill. And so then it, it's not just going to flatten out and go flat you know it has to keep going up if you put a lot of power on it and then what's up branches and different things like that that's what makes this really tough she's often to go with the forehand wow. throws turnover perfectly now that wow. is a well done. Done. yeah amazing shot from there i mean we don't typically see Paige throwing a lot of sidearm approaches from you know 80 feet so or that's 100 true. feet so that that just shows you how tricky that really was and it was just well executed sarah take a look at her options a lot of weird i think no i think that's she's right I'm going to throw a sidearm little puppy thing with one of these three. Looks like Sarah's trying to figure out what, what to do here. I mean, and here's another thing. She's, you know, inside almost, almost about 70 feet on this hole and still having to, you know, really take her time to figure out how to, how to get this. Looks like should be pretty easy. Yeah, honestly, she's she, weighing a lot of options here. Yeah, but it's nice to see that. I mean, yeah, it is not just picking one and throwing. She, you know, she's really taking her time. She knows that you know, getting up and down is very important, especially after seeing the rest of the group kind of struggle. Ooh. Gives it a little bid there. Beautiful, that was a nice shot. Very well done. 
That's nice too. We saw her discussing her options with her caddy. And it's, do you find you lean on your caddy at all out there? Yeah, it depends on the caddy, honestly. I mean, if, if I have a caddy who doesn't know what he's talking about, probably not. <laughs> but having another player caddy on the bag, I'll definitely discuss options and things like that. Vanessa runs these. So this would be a really good, if somehow she could figure out a way to connect. Oh, very good run, but that was a good putt. So hopefully that'll give her a little confidence moving forward. We've seen her miss a few. I'd like to see her get back on track. And you can see that it's it's pretty. And there was Liz running that outside the circle putt there, and she's going to have to tap in for her first bogey of the round. And you think like, oh, finally under, you know, under 400 foot uh, hole and, you know, this should be pretty easy. And then you're going to see some of the, or one of the only bogeys on the round. Yeah, that elevation, the foliage there makes it a very challenging hole. And these, these next putts should just be little formalities for them, just little tap-ins, you know? Yeah, but you definitely want to focus on these because we've all given up strokes on these easy ones. Well done. <laughs> Especially after your bag falling down and taking you out of your routine like that. <laughs> Can you call a courtesy violation on yourself? Yeah, seriously. A little louder, Marty. A little bit louder. Still? Yep. We're not live. No, we're good. getting outside and challenging yourself to become better? How about spending time with family and friends, or just marveling at the pure joy of flight? Then you've come to the right place at the right time. Join the PDGA. When I need to check the wind, I just let out my hair. Disc golf is 90% mental. The other 10% also mental. If you want to make new friends on the course, pick up someone's disc in the fairway by accident. Stay getting birdies, my friends.
the first run IPA. Come visit us in Bend. You'll get fresh beer. You'll get uh, some hospitality. And I guarantee you'll either see Val, Justin, or I. Fresh as you can get it right here. When I need to check the wind, I just let out my hair. Disc golf is 90% mental. The other 10% also mental. If you want to make new friends on the course, pick up someone's disc in the fairway by accident. Stay getting birdies, my friends. Yeah, so, you know, one of the things that this course is known for is the big backups as well. You know, yeah. with all the elevation, tee shots and things like that kind of go awry and you get into that high rough that we've been seeing already on the first few holes. Um, but as we look at the score, you know, the scoreboard, we see Jessica Weiss, you know, four down through five holes. Wow. And that's a wow. really great start. Um, yeah. We saw Paige on the same pace, but now she's kind of leveled out and, you know, she's four down through 11 holes so she had her first bogey in there um sarah two down through five and we we're able to watch that card hannah mcbeth playing very well at one down through five sarah damar another local from michigan is one down through six and uh you know a few a few notables down there lisa um even par katrina allen at even par so we definitely are madison walker one down so we're definitely seeing, you know, a couple four downs and then kind of leveling off from there and a lot of bunch people bunched up. And um, I think once we get into the back nine, I think that's going to change a bit because of the elevation and different things like that. The holes get a little bit harder, a little bit easier to bogey, tougher to birdie. And we'll see kind of the scores, you know, maybe you get go to a, a little bit over par or, or or something like that i think they're going to get a little tougher so if they can keep these you know minus four and minus eight something like that i think that's what the hot round's going to be today sarah is on a nice pace right now as we said if she can just keep parring sprinkle a couple birdies in there and she skips up, and that's the mandatory tree. So yeah, they're gonna be mando right of that. Yep, you gotta go to the right, but she hits it, and it looks like she's fine. But this is another one of those holes with the goalie down there, dropping down to 15 feet, and then jumping back up 23 feet. Yep. 
I'm not sure where that ended up. I think she uh, turned it over a little bit too much there, but could be a product of that mandatory tree. You know, that's, that's a tight tree, especially yeah. on the angle that they have to throw on it. I think we're going to see a lot of people miss that mandatory, if not even be able to, you know, that's pretty far down Is the fairway. It, was it in play last year? No, I don't believe this was in play. And she hits it. She hits the mandatory as well. She didn't miss it. Nope. Some good accuracy. <laughs> I don't think they're aiming for it, though. And this is just really trusting whatever disc you have. You, you're going to want an understable disc um, to be able to throw it and make sure it turns over. But this will be a little bit – I mean, that's going to be fine. That's yeah. going to be fine. I think she ended up okay there. It definitely makes it a bit harder now that they put that mandatory tree because you could sneak on the inside of it and have a look, and you can sneak on the right side, and you really didn't even think about it. And now with that there – it makes that, you know, obviously it's going to make it na more narrow, but, you know, that's pretty far down the fairway, as we said. As we, you know, move through the course, you can kind of see the changes that they're making um, from last year to this year. And that mandatory tree that we just saw is really far down the fairway, yeah. making it a really tight corridor for everybody to to kind of get through to get in position for your second shot so um hats off to the tournament director and the course designer to try to make this tougher for them like you mentioned earlier try to paul proof the yeah. course per se i don't know if we'll be able to see another 18 down or something like that this uh you know never know everybody never keeps know. talking about it but i would say no yeah <laughs> yeah you we'll see. you know seeing two you know, two 18 downs in two years is incredible. Yes. You know, that's something that really we've never seen on, on live or even on post-production. So people talk about it like it's going to happen again soon. I, I think, I think that would be spectacular, but I would probably say no. We got Liz coming up to her line. Yep. But don't let Macbeth hear me. <laughs> We know he likes to take things and to motivate himself. I didn't say he can't. <laughs> I said it might be a couple of years till he does it again. As Liz lines this up. And that's a good shot. That was well done. Very good. Very good. She got, you know, that's a great um, thing to bring up is she through that turnover but what that does is it actually opens up the fairway for her backhand approach you know we haven't seen her throw sidearm yet so to get to the right side of the fairway there takes the mando kind of out of play for her there you go. Yep. and it opens up that alley to the basket and she's going to have her first birdie putt of the round Sarah's butted right up against that mando tree. It looks like she'll have plenty of room with her forehand. Yeah, and this is going to be a very understable disc. Oh. And that's awesome. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, what a tool to have, yeah. you know, to be able to run up but have the sidearm to where, you know, that tree really isn't even in play, and it really didn't affect her shot much. Not at all. She flexed that orange insanity right over, right in there. Uh, Vanessa asking for, you know, make sure she plays this correctly. And she's not she's not going to be throwing sidearm. And so, you know, like we said, it was a great tool for Sarah to be able to just throw it without out any problems. And Vanessa here does have problems from almost the same lie. I'm seeing that more and more in today's game that you have to have both those shots, the forehand and backhand, and have confidence in them to be competitive. Oh yeah. I mean, it, it's, it takes somebody, it, it takes an extremely talented player in one of those categories to be able to, um, wow, what a shot <laughs> to be able to, you know, go through a career without one, you know, and, and a couple people that kind of come to mind for me 
is somebody like a, a Des Redding. You know, she went through her entire career seemingly not throwing a lot of sidearms when I used to, you know, watch her play. And, you know, lots of world titles, even uh, Valerie Jenkins, um, or pardon me, Valerie Doss, back when she was winning those um, early titles, you know, she was throwing only backhand. So, yep. like you said, to have both now is very important. Yes. I remember seeing Des turn over that old beat up leopard of her time and time again. Yeah, yeah, for sure. She's an amazing thrower of the um, backhand, for sure. And these women are making their way up the fairway. But just another another hole with a great example of a lot of rough. Um, that mandatory, you know, definitely made the, the hole a bit harder. And then elevation again. You have to go, you know, you're throwing over like kind of a ditch, and then you have to come back up the hill. Um, and just lots of elevation. Putting is 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 key. In, in obviously every round, but you can really get into a rhythm on an, a normal course with not a lot of elevation, you know, a couple high rises, oh, whoop de doo But when you're having to, you know, like here, sh you're just outside circle two, and she has to throw this because it's straight uphill. And then let's say she does get into the circle, you know, even that, that shot that she just threw, she's going to be 15 feet she's going to be on a, like a tricky little slope, you know, her stance is going to be a little wobbly. I mean, it's not your, com you're not in your comfort zone. Right. Right. And that's what makes it tough is you don't have that flat stance. So, you know, you go to, uh, as Sarah lines us up. Oh, and if one miss, it's, a, you know, you think aim high, aim high, aim high, and then you miss high, and you're like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, she definitely <laughs> had a little too much want on that, but right in there. And here's Paige lining up that running jump. But, but when you go to practice, but you don't typically go, okay, I want to go to the weirdest stances ever on the <laughs> slope. You know, that's not fun. Oh, and that one was almost good. But yeah, when you go practice, like you, you know, you want a flat surface and then you kind of do your steps and you're like, okay, I'm good today. And then you come to a course like this and it's like, you're never going to have a flat putt ever. So it's almost a new stroke every time. And it just kind of keeps you uneasy, yeah. you know, through yeah. the round. It doesn't, unless you're great about practicing uphill downhill i know i didn't really i'm still not comfortable with like right at 30 feet uphill that's hard yeah but it's tough to find a practice basket where you can do that where you can just go putt it's not fun no it's not you find on steep hills um, a lot of players will do the straddle putt to take some of that slope out of play does that help you as yeah, I, I think it de definitely does to a point. I mean, uh, she sneaks that one in. See, like even from that distance, it, she wasn't like completely confident. You know, when you're when you're trying to go, you know, you have your rhythm from back, your back foot, and then you have to push off, and then you're going to push off, right. you know, to the front. So a great point when you're putting uphill as Liz has the, you know, flat putt right there. But as you're putting uphill and you're trying to go from your back foot up, you're not getting a lot of power on there. So it messes your whole rhythm up. Right, right. And so going to straddle, like you said, definitely helps that because even when you're on a flat, you know, surface and you have to straddle, it's kind of the same thing. Right. Same rhythm. Um, as we go to the next hole, hole six. Um, sorry, hole seven, 385 foot OB to the left. You can see this gap. You want to get through this gap, basically, and then land as this drone is, I guess, floating on a cloud. Elevation's making it hard <laughs> to get up there. You want to land anywhere right here or a little bit shorter, and then you'll have to um, throw your approach shot into this green um, the branches on the left kind of come into play 
and again, straight uphill the entire time. And here is the second card. Second from um, last to tee off, that is. A uh, good looking putt there. I believe that was Kona making a nice putt. And there's a good putt. I believe that was Hannah Macbeth. And then Jessica tapping in. And their last player on the card also tapping in. And you can see the banners behind the basket right there. They're moving a little bit. So, you know, that's something we haven't touched base on yet, Marty, is it could be a little bit breezy out there. Which yeah. and when you're dealing with uphill and downhill, that's a big time factor yeah. because then you're exposing the bottom of the disc, you know, to those elements. Right. And when um we did the whole preview, I said you had to hit a gap, and I was wrong about that. I'm not too familiar, um, with the um, women's tee pad, so I apologize for that. Uh. As you can see, Sarah is um, getting ready to throw this tee shot. But the landing zone that we were talking about, you know, that is that is uh, the correct spot these women are going to try to throw to. Good. We can see that new OB line there on the left. Yeah, and that definitely is coming into play, especially for uh, righty backhands. They don't turn it over enough. Definitely highs are out in that out of bounds, which is really going to bring this pine tree into play. <laughs> <laughs> so close. And then if you hit the pine tree like she did, and you're going to be behind it, uh, it's going to be tough on your approach because you're not going to have the height to get it all the way up up there. I mean, that's 20 foot above their heads from that pine tree to the basket. It is. This needs to get down in a hurry. And, and you know, we're on hole seven. Vanessa um, is plus three. She's going to need to get up and down from there to remain plus three. She needs to, she needs to get going. You know, she's, I don't want to say she's running out of holes on this front nine, but I mean, three over through seven holes, she's a way better player than that. She is. It's uncharacteristic of her. Oh boy. Let's pull that a little bit. And then that's the rough. I mean, you know, one, <laughs> it's, it's funny. One side you have uh, artificial out of bounds to where you're taking a stroke guaranteed and then the other side is natural um out of bounds where you're pretty much just going to have to pitch out you know to a spot from there if she can even find the disc i mean that was that that didn't look too promising in no. there hopefully a spotter is in the area that can help her out yep and here we go on hole seven or pardon me um i believe this hole this is Paige Pierce, possibly. Wow, what a drive. If that was Paige, I mean, that was an amazing drive down the hill. I couldn't really tell who that was, but this will be hole eight. Oh, no, 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 this is hole nine. Pardon me, I don't know what hole they're on, but I do know that, that was an amazing tee shot down the hill. Here's another drive coming in. I believe this is hole. This is going to be hole eight. So they're playing down this hill, um, kind of a blind shot into the green. And this is, I believe, a gettable hole for them. For, you know, obviously it's a gettable hole for them, but one that they can be a little bit more aggressive on. 
than previous holes. Oh, I'm not even close. That's not hole eight at all. I think that's hole 12. All right, so now that I completely botched that, uh, <laughs> I do know that Paige is throwing her upshot right here. And there's that low ceiling we were talking about. Couldn't get the height, tried to do, um, you know, the backward stance there. And there's just, it's just tough to get the power yep. in a stance like that. Yep. And then to have to be accurate on top of it. I mean, that's just really hard. You see Sarah kind of shake her head. She's having to deal with the same, I think the same thing. The, the, the one thing that's, I feel like is benefiting her is she has a really low release, you know? Yes. As we yep. saw on, I think, hole four, her kind of scraping the, the weeds with her sidearm swing. She might be able to get under these and get it, I'd say, to circle's edge. I'm guessing this is a really understable disc. It's that insanity that she's been leaning on a lot today. She breaks circle's edge and puts it to about 25 feet. I mean, what a shot from there. She gave it everything she could. She even fell down. <laughs> Commitment. It looks like this is that was I, I believe that was Liz's tee shot how uh, she turned that over into the rough and she tried to throw the sidearm out it looks like she did kind of get out a bit um, as I looked at my u-disc stats I was able to find out what hole on that um, camera shot that was hole 14 that Paige and her card were throwing on so down okay. the hill part like a par three uh that was definitely hole 14 as Vanessa has this you know she's gonna try this run up again and that's that's hard because she has the out of bounds right behind her so there's you know she can't get a big run up and then it's uphill the whole way so it's just tough to remain accurate And she pulled, yeah, she pulls that one to the right side. Maybe got pin high or something. I just saw a little branch or something wiggle in there. Could have gotten through to a putt. She might have a chance to save her bogey from there. Give me back here, Lou. Paige just walked right up and threw it. Yeah, that's definitely one thing she's known for is is really taking taking no time, very little time. And, you know, if that's your routine, that's your routine though. As long as you stick to it, I I have no problem with it with it. You know, a good thing is is thing about having a routine is doing the same thing every single time so if she's not taking her time which we see her kind of just get up and throw a lot of the time that's great but um, the only problem I have with people who don't take their time is then when the pressure's on and you know in pressure situations let's say you have a putt for the win or something like that it seems like all of a sudden you start taking time right and then you're you're kind of out of your routine there and that and that can be a little bit tougher to um, stay focused. Definitely, and I mean, being in a routine, there's a physical routine, and then the take on that doing the physical routine is to get yourself in that mental zone, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. The whole point of a physical routine is to get yourself mentally ready 
to be confident in whatever you're trying to do in that moment, whether it's putting, backhand, approach. Here's Vanessa to save par after throwing it out of bounds on the tee shot. A little bit left. And here is Sarah from about 20 feet. I mean, you see those flags behind the basket, the left to right wind, uphill, biker in the background. Let's see if she's able to get this one enough height. Yep. Barely, but gets it to stay. Yep, it's a very efficient putt. No wasted energy on that one. <laughs> nope, right over the rim, right in that left side pocket. That's going to be another birdie. As everybody else is just going to tap in these little dinker putts. And this is hole eight. And as you can see, you're going to be throwing over all of this. Uh, wait, let's see. I got to make sure I don't get the tee pads uh, mixed up here. Yep, 462 feet. Everybody plays from the same tee pad. You're going to have to hit a small gap, but I think everybody will have no problem making the gap. And then you have to make the extreme left turn here almost 90 degrees once you get out of the gap goes directly left and then you can see the basket in this little gap right here um i think good tee shots are going to come out about 60 to 80 short into that fairway uh interested to see how uh sarah does with this tee shot being sidearm dominant i think she might throw something flippy off the off the tee but we'll see in just a second and now we'll go to hole 15 and you can see the OB line to the left there. And they're going to have to throw something that turns over a bit and then flattens out to go straight and hopefully nothing that goes left. Turn that over a little bit. Yeah, this, this hole is 400 feet and it's got a 16 feet of elevation change. And here's, and here's Paige. You know, it says it has that amount of elevation, but I think, I think at one point it has to be, you know, almost double that elevation because of that little dip. I mean, it goes down and then straight back up right. to where the basket might be at 14 foot elevation, but where they're, you know, most of these tee shots are going to land are going to be a good 20 feet below the basket. Looks like Kona. Kona throwing a beautiful tee shot. Oh, and that's just great. What yeah, a good tee shot smooth. there. Mm -hmm. Use the right down the middle of the tee pad and um, going to be in great position for birdie. I didn't know I could throw that far. <laughs> We're back to hole eight. What do you What do you think? You think that um, I don't know. I don't think that Sarah's gonna throw a sidearm here. <laughs> I think it's a solid bet. It's a solid bet. I don't know, man. It's just it's such a tough tee shot. It definitely goes down the hill and then straight to the left. You have a point. We have seen her break out that backhand more and more. You're right. I mean, if there was a hole for her to do it on. This is definitely the hole. Yep. And it, Ladies, the, an eye out. It, it, it is interesting to see that 
they didn't put a lot of any OB on this hole. So they're using their natural rough as the out of bounds again. Right. But this is, you know, one of those holes that um, is gettable, but it's a, it's like almost a bonus birdie for sure. Yeah. Find these backups, they take you off your game much, or what do you find that you like to do to try to keep your, your body and mind focused? On the on your game well it depends on the player you know it depends on your experience as well like you know for somebody who's been playing as long as uh, a lot of these women have been playing they're used to it you know but somebody like a new player you know mm -hmm. who's just kind of entering um that competition field it could be tough you know because you're not used to waiting on those backups if you're not experienced in tournament play but i don't think really anybody is going to have a tough time with it because of their experience i mean when you have a you know half hour backup or something that can definitely take you off your game because that doesn't happen often for anybody mm -hmm. but as far as like 10 10 minute backups i think we're all kind of used to it sidearm yep Point for Marty. <laughs> then Paige throws a cider. <laughs> Just kidding. Steps up and rips it. And that's too high. She also hit the branch, so this is going to end up left, and and left on this hole really isn't good. You can go into that high rough to the left over there, and it can be really tricky to to navigate then towards towards the basket which is also left you have like all woods same thing it's a little bit better that might be able to hold the fairway depending on how flippy that disc was but what? that might yeah that might have been too high as well i think i think that about head high from vanessa right here would be would be the right height um with the power that she has i think head high would be would give her the best shot at getting, you know, pretty far down the fairway. Oh. And that's too low. And that could be. Pull it right again. That could be bad. Um, if you don't hit that gap, you know, that could fall straight down and she could have, who knows, who knows from there, <laughs> honestly. Because they're, they're, you know, 40, 40 feet above the fairway. Right. And that tree was directly off the tee pad. Um, you can kind of see where they're walking right there. Uh, the, the darker person, that's all the rough. So if she didn't clear that, mm -hmm. kind of, don't save yourself. Kind of done. <laughs> the lack of a better word. Yeah, you can see the tree to the left there and how it kind of squares up that gap. That's up there is where they teed off. And wow. she hit the tree straight to the left. So it might be tough for her to find that tee shot, honestly. I've never seen anybody hit that tree. Wow. Because you want to go so far left, pulling it that far right, is uh, you rarely see that. See if we can get a better camera angle. There we go. And yeah, there she is looking for it. I mean, and then another thing to point out, and I don't really want to point out, but there's there's poison poison ivy Ooh. everywhere. So that just gives you know makes me cringe a little bit when <laughs> I see that because I know every time I come off this course, if I end up in the rough, I get I get a little bit of that poison for sure. And you can't even see them looking in there. That's how deep this rough is. I mean, they might need to start a clock because mm -hmm. that, you know. That's what I was just thinking. That could, that just could be gone. Yeah. And it didn't look like they had a uh, spotter or volunteer in that area. Mm -mm. The, you know, those the spotters are going to be way down the fairway looking for those ones that went in left. Right. It's unlikely not, spot. Yeah, not right off the tee. 
the good thing is, is the whole group saw the tree that it hit, so they'll be able to do that. But once it hits the tree, like I said, you got 40 feet, a 40 foot drop. So then that, this could, you know, end up at 40 feet, you hit the tree, it could go anywhere within like a hundred foot radius. Looks like she's got some good card mates in there helping her out, trying to find it. Yeah, let's let's go to the scoreboard and see what's happening. Yeah, all right, here we go. And and as they move through the through the course, you know, I'd mentioned earlier that those scores could start dwindling. And um, it looks like we're not seeing a lot of people over par, but we're definitely seeing, you know, we saw Paige at five, we saw Jessica at five under, and now, you know, they're leaking, leaking a couple strokes here and there. So yeah. looks like Katrina's moving up a little bit and Sarah. Sarah and uh, Jessica are about playing the same pace, both on hole seven and eight, three and two down, respectively. Yeah, it looks, uh, yeah, definitely a tight leaderboard. It looks like even par to anything under par at this tournament is going to be really good. And I believe they might have found the disc, which is good news, maybe. <laughs> For Vanessa, if she can figure out a way to push, you know, she's gonna have to get to that fairway, and it's still good, yeah. a good 150 feet in front of her. And you know, an, another point is like, if she can't move forward with this next shot, you know, reteeing is also an option. You know, you can take. Yeah. Your previous lie which is the t-pad with a stroke penalty and then you know you got to think if she can only you know let's say she can only pitch out to like where the cameraman is right that's not very far no and from the tee shot if you just miss the tree that you just hit you can get all the way down to like 60 feet right oh it looks like she's in front she's in front of the tree so she'll be able to she'll be able to get down there Well, I mean, she got she went forward, but forward really isn't that great because the basket's left. So she threw to where it looks like somebody's going to go help spot her disc, but that's going to be – there's not going to be a route into the basket. She's not getting up and down from there. Wow. Unless she, you know, can throw it to, like, make a long, long putt. But, I, I mean, that's that's a big if. Yeah. And that's only the, that's only one of their tee shots. There's two other ones that went way left into the rough. Um, I think only one person might have made it actually down to the fairway, and they're gonna have to wait for Vanessa to go to her next slide to throw her approach because she's almost further away now than she was from the tee pad. She's just now flat on the ground. Wow. That's definitely uh, three words we never like to hear in disc golf. You're still out. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like there was a friendly spectator who was able to find her disc, though, and they didn't have to look for it for very long. That's nice. You can see as she stands um, over her lie that those high weeds are still giving her a problem, and, and she's just, you know, she's on flat ground at that point. Wow. Looking at a standstill, even running up in weeds is challenging. Yeah, and I said earlier that she would be further away, but it looks like she has putter in her hand, so she might. Ooh. Eh. Sounded like she caught a tree. Yeah, but I mean, that's just a tough place to be. But I was going to say she might not be as far away as I thought. But then she hit a tree, and now I look like a genius. <laughs> <laughs> she might still be out. And she is heading in the wrong direction really quick. I mean, she's already plus five, and the course isn't going to get any easier as far as, hmm. you know, getting back on track. It's not like these are going to be easy birdies to get. It's going to be she needs she needs to right this ship real quick. Yeah. 
and you know you get in a rhythm on a course whether it be a good rhythm or a bad rhythm and it's really easy to just keep going on that same path so so true anything that you find to help get you off that wrong path when we're running down it that works for you yeah i just go i just get more aggressive that's what i always tell right. myself you know if i'm struggling a bit you it's really easy to to be like okay things aren't going to work and like i said you get kind of down that negative path of uh, oh nothing i do is going to be right so then i just you know push it into a higher gear and and go a little more aggressive usually helps helps me because then i at the end of the round i can say well like you know i really tried i really tried to dig myself out that makes a lot of sense because normally when we are not having our best round we tend to be a little tentative on our shots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're off. And when you're off, you want to be tentative. You want to you want to kind of pad what you you know, you think, "Oh my gosh, I'm not playing very well. I can't do that." You know, I can't push the envelope because if I do, obviously I'm off, so I'm not going to be able to, you know, accomplish that shot. As we see Paige in in the rough way to the left there. And look how tall that rough is. She's going into a, a <laughs> tent <laughs> essentially but then when you're able but then you know that's why I, when i'm struggling i'm just like you know i'm gonna go i'm gonna go harder then right i'm gonna try basically try harder i think and that's one thing I w i've been able to do well in my career is when conditions were tough or, you know, nobody really wanted to be on the course. I think I got a lot of wins by trying hard, you know, and not just let, not just being like, oh, woe is me, you know, because a lot of players have definitely been, you know, I've gotten some, some wins in my career over players who I shouldn't have beat because possibly they didn't, you know, they weren't out there trying as hard as me. Right. That makes a lot of sense. We, we've all had that that feeling we're just dying to get off the course and actually flip the script, so to speak, and uh, attack it makes a lot of sense. And then afterwards, you know, there's no second guessing. You're not like, well, I should have, I should have, you know, laid off a little bit. You know, there's nothing wrong with being aggressive. There really isn't. We see, you know, one great example of that is, is Paige Pierce. She is aggressive always. You're right. And Paige gets out of the bushes. Yeah, she she gets out and she's she'll have a, a an approach, but that's not good. I mean, this that's gonna she's getting bogey. Bogeys yep. aren't good. You know, this is a don't let this hole fool, fool you. It can be tough, but as long as you you know hit a fifteen foot wide gap, mm -hmm. you should be able to to throw into this green and I'm very surprised to see everybody but it looks like but Sarah get off the trailway on this and that's a good shot she's up there yeah very surprised to see them off the fairway on this one it's it's a basic hyzer down the hill you just aim it a bit low and then throw it straight and then it just falls to the earth so i think maybe they overthought it or, or maybe bad disc selection but um as the rounds move forward i think probably tomorrow um as the leaders kind of shuffle up and down you really see who's playing well that weekend um I don't think we'll see these these high scores on this hole. And um, Liz is over there in the rough, and you saw that we um, in the booth were able to see a different camera angle, and she had already thrown kind of a, a shot that didn't move forward at all. So she's going to be throwing three from the from the woods now. And we see Sarah going to be tapping in for a par. She's at two under. And there's nobody, you know, after this hole, 
you know, Paige is going to be going to plus two. Liz is going to be at least plus three. Vanessa plus, you know, possibly plus seven. So Sarah's playing very well, especially for the group that she's playing in right now. She sure who, is. Who everybody else is kind of struggling. Not kind of, they are. Especially as we look at the leaderboard, there's, you know, 10 to 15 people around plus one or better. And that's a good approach. That'll give her a putt just to take bogey on the hole. Looks like Vanessa has a window. I'm sure she's going to be running this one. Another uphill putt on a high basket. You know, this isn't on a high rise, but it's definitely high. Nice. Uh, Cash. Yeah, that was a beautiful that putt. That was awesome. So as I say that they, they shouldn't be taking bogeys, this is, it is coming in as the fourth most difficult hole. So it's, you know, for the – um, for the conditions they're playing in today, this isn't a this isn't a picnic. No. I expect I expect more out of out of these players, though. I do. Understandable. But it's definitely showing its teeth. Absolutely. And it's showing these other good scores how well the girls are playing, along with Sarah, of course. Absolutely, as Liz has. Nice. Well, she's been putting well today. I mean, she's she hasn't had anything really outside 20 feet, but like we said, it can be easy to kind of get off track with the the slopes and different things like that to, to keep that putting stroke going. I mean, that's interesting. Interesting, too. Liz putts with a uh, Challenger OS, which is a pretty overstable putter. Um, she switched to that after having hand surgery and going through rehab. Oh. Interesting to putt with an overstable putter after a hand surgery, though, to me. Yeah. I would have thought you would have chosen a less stable putter. But it's definitely working for her. Absolutely. And here we go into hole nine. This is going to be 452 feet uphill. And this is just, you know, this is a massive hole. As you can see, we're just going to creep up the hill and, and then you can barely see the basket kind of come into view right now and this is par four it's tough though you have to throw up the hill into a position to where you'll have a low ceiling shot from there so um, once you get up you're gonna have to make a kind of a right hand turn right away through the through the fairway you'll see some people who kind of turn it over a bit to the right they might be able to have like a low ceiling or something, but they'll have to deal with all that rough. But uh, as we check in on some scores here, it looks like Paige still holding on at that negative four. Um, she's leading right now. Jessica Weiss uh, at three under. Sarah um, at two, and she's made her way up to third place. You know, a while back she was right around six, sixth place with that two under. So the the scores are starting to move up and. You know, Paige is plus two at tied for 10th. So the scores are tough. Um, Katrina and Madison are at minus one. Madison's in the clubhouse at minus one. So that's, she's the leader in the clubhouse right now. And if things don't go well in the last couple holes, that could be very good score. Yes. Very yeah. good score, especially for what we're seeing right now. We're seeing 
unfortunately with our featured card we're seeing them find the really tough spots on the course to where they're going into the rough and you can't even see them they just completely disappear into the rough which is um which is really hard uh they're having to just kind of pitch straight out they're having to deal with backups um a little breeze um so definitely courses playing a bit difficult it does and then seeing it in this fashion it makes Paul's negative 18 kind of emphasizes a little bit more how tough that was. Oh, yeah. People I mean, were claiming it was a soft course, but I don't, I disagree. Yeah. That's, Definitely. Yeah. Don't, don't say that to the, um, to our featured card today. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's definitely just incredible feat again, you know, and, and we're going to be bringing that up over and over because it gives you a really good example of, of what can be done on the course. Right. But then you see other scores, you know, um, an interesting fact is that, that day I had the second best score on the on the course, That's and right. it was uh, six clear of that. So, <laughs> and here's Sarah throwing to the very top of the hill. What a shot! I mean, that is a great tee shot. That displays a lot of power from her right there to be able to get it up in position. She'll have 150 feet into the pin. And Paige running up and gunning. And here's that kind of flex shot up the hill. That And that's the position. That's good that she landed there because that'll give us a good perspective. She got a full flex out of that, and she's still going to have to deal with that low ceiling, nose up kind of putter approach, which isn't easy. No. Liz is going to be in the same position. I mean, she gets a little bit further. That's going to be easier for sure. It's going to be easier than – than pages just because she got in front of that tree. I'd like to see Vanessa get going here after that great putt. Yeah, I mean. I said it was gonna have it was gonna take about a 60 footer for her to to save from where she was and in fact it took about a 40 footer so and she made us she made us into liars, which I love seeing. <laughs> If you guys like the H3 V2, but maybe you're looking for just a little bit more flip up and glide, the H4 V2 is going to be your disc. I'm absolutely loving it and it filled a spot in my bag immediately. Zuka is now producing limited edition color choices. Zuka can add custom embroidery to the front and or sides of the bag. Zuka is now producing limited edition color choices. Zuka can add custom embroidery to the front and or sides of the bag. I can throw this disc around the world in one shot. Never play disc golf too far into the jungle. There may be cheetahs. Someone on your card can't recall if they threw a six or a seven. It was probably an eight. See? Stay getting birdies, my friends. Wear what the pros that film the pros wear. Savage Pro Tour Apparel. Full body dye sub technology. Sweat wicking polyester. Lightweight cirrus jersey. Made in the USA. Are you savage? Wear what the pros that film the pros wear. Get yours today. Sarah showing us that low ceiling we were talking about, but 
making it look pretty easy. But that was from a knee, and you know, as her disc flew up underneath the branch there, it was almost like she had to like hit like a one foot radius, you know, like I have to throw it one foot the whole entire way. And she she made good from right there. So she continues just impressed today. She's in the zone. There's another good approach. Here's Paige going above and under the branch. And, and actually, as Paige approached right there, you know, I looked at, and uh, Udisc is showing us this is a par three. So this is a really tough par three, you know. It is a tough Coming time. in as, uh, again, the uh, fourth most difficult hole. So, wow. you know, it's playing just as hard as the previous hole tied. So this one isn't too easy. I think, I think as far as the rough goes, I think it, it's – you're going to see less double bogeys on this hole than maybe the previous hole, just because of how uh, you're going to see more, a little less four, a little less bogeys, not a lot of birdies. So I don't think anybody's really going to birdie this hole because of the distance up the hill. You're right. I, there hasn't been a birdie all day on it. It's averaging 3.58. Oh, just been one of those days for Vanessa, you know, now she connects and Basket's not willing to accept her putt there. Yeah, just a little low and left. It could have went either way. That is one thing about Vanessa uh, is she putts hard. So yeah. it's almost like, you you know, when you putt hard, center, center comes in more play. You know, you're not going to get those left-hand catches. You're not going to get a lot of those right-hand catches um, when you're putting so hard especially downhill you know it seems like it's easier to push out left push out right but still you you'd like to see those go in yeah for sure especially with the day she's having yep she's gonna move to plus eight now on the round plus eight through nine holes is not what you're looking for you know and she's she's been known to be very consistent As we move into hole 10, 370 feet, another hole that, you know, we're going to maybe see maybe a birdie, possibly. I mean, and that's that's going to be a rarity. Uh, they're going to want to turn something over, you know, early. You see this bush on the left? In order for them to get a birdie on this hole, they're going to have to throw something perfectly between this gap and then land in this ditch somewhere and then maybe throw it in. I mean, maybe Paige has uh, – Paige and Katrina have, you know, a little bit more power than the rest of the field. So we might see them throw something up and maybe have a look. But, it, I mean, that plays far, really far up the hill. And so far, in fact, that I believe – this is the hole that Macbeth missed as we bring up the you know, right. that in, in, infinite, uh, I said infinite, but that amazing round that he had yep, as we yep. moved back. You're right. Um, his, his foot just slipped off. Oh, that is, that's correct. Yep. And this is the last hole. She, she kind of giggles to herself as she pulls that one into the rough, but that is no laughing matter. If you go right here, and it's a tough approach because it plays directly uphill, you know, like a lot of the other holes, and it is just really tough to get it up and around the corner. You know, if we were to – if I could point out where the basket is on 18, it'd be straight ahead. That gap, nowhere close to the line. It has to go out of that gap and then go directly right. Wow. That is a kind of where her head is right there. And it plays far. Oh. And that is out of bounds to the left there. You can see the walls.
pretty good shot there. That should be right in the middle of the fairway. Here's Vanessa. Let's see if she played, you know, a lot of a lot of these players might just play to the left and then pitch up the hill, which is what she did right yeah. there. That's a perfect shot. Poison ivy ruins the best day outdoors. Honey, careful. I saw poison ivy. The rash is ugly, itchy, and spreads quickly. Xanfel's your answer. Skip nutty remedies and expensive visits to urgent care. When you get poison ivy, get Xanfel. No side effects. Safe for kids. Xanfel washes away the toxin that causes the itching rash. Complete relief. Xanfel lets the healing begin. Got poison ivy? Get Xanfel. It works. And here we have uh, Liz in the high rough to the left there. So this is gonna be far up the hill. Um, one thing I wanna point out to the viewer is a couple of our cameras have actually gone down. So um, bear with us with our camera angles. We're gonna give you the best uh, that we can for this live coverage. Um, but yeah, we're having some technical difficulties. So this, this is up the hill and uh, as you can see the basket right there, looks like she went a little bit right and that's some, you know, that's hats off to the camera guy right there. That was a good shot to catch. Yeah, actually, you know, it was just, an excellent shot. Yeah. Gave you a real feel for how uphill that is. Yep. Yeah, and here's Paige taking no time. Cut a little early branch, knocked it down. And that's going to be tough. I mean, she she's going to be in the circle probably right there, Marty. But the thing is, she'll be in the circle. She'll be down that hill. She'll be in another tent to where, you know, it'll be random if she even has a look up at, at the basket. I mean, those, you know, unfortunately, um, height isn't going to be on her side. You know, she's, a, she's you know, um, not going to have the ceiling she probably wants. I mean, she's got to be only four foot you know 10 or something maybe right around five foot tall so you know that definitely yeah. comes into play it does. you know it'd be nice to be like a um big germ or something six 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 you never have to worry about anything but not all of us have that necessity or asset i guess here's sarah throwing up and that's a really good shot there that should be fine she's she's okay with it And here is Paige. Well, not Paige. I mean, this is the, the scoreboard for our um, FPO division, and, and Paige is hanging on at, at minus four. But, you know, we saw her tee shot on 18, and mm -hmm. it didn't look promising. I'm going to say that it didn't look promising as far as par goes, unless she got a really good kick that we weren't able to see. I think that that score could possibly go down to, to minus three. And... And more and more and more, we're seeing Madison had the early tee time, and that could be lead card. You know, yeah, that could right. that could just hang on to that lead card spot, which will be really impressive, especially coming with a, a really early tee time. And they're gonna have to find a couple of these up shots that ended up into that ditch, and you can see the great footage right here. You can see Liz; she's. 15 to 20 feet away from that basket and you can't even see her <laughs> in the in the rough you know i got it 
I mean, that guy is looking under those branches and <laughs> it's just brutal. It's wow. brutal seeing this rough and um it is and this is a temporary course that they just set up for these events each year, correct? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean this one isn't in um year year round for sure. Uh you know, one thing that we definitely have to to mention about this course though is if you don't have the power, you know, Sarah Sarah has enough power. She doesn't have the, the most power, mm -hmm. but she has enough power. You know, Ooh. oh, she, and she Ooh. tries sidearm, but then gets the worst result ever. She, she goes sidearm. You know, she's 15 feet there, like I said, but then she has to throw sidearm to try to make it. Makes a good run, and then it rolls. She gets punished. <laughs> yeah, 60 feet down the hill. That's rough, man. That was not kind. Um, but what I was saying is, you know, Sarah has enough power. The one thing that plays to her advantage is all these holes are essentially going from, from left to right. Right, right. Which plays into her game. Yep. Now, if it wasn't for her, I would say Paige or Katrina have the best chance at this tournament. Not only because they're the best players in the world, but power comes into play here. Yep. because you're able to throw it over these like um you know ditches mm -hmm. and things on your upshots to where that extra power is going to give you instead of having 250 foot uphill you have 100 foot uphill that's a big difference that is unfortunately Paige catches that bad roll and now you know it's gonna it's gonna cost her it's gonna cost her bogey um double bogey actually But yeah, this is one of those rare courses that if you have the power, there's not a lot of out of bounds. You can just kind of throw it like we saw Liz doing that one hole. Mm -hmm. You know, she just threw it up there into the rough and then and then was, had an easy upshot. Yeah, and just just struggle bus, yeah. for sure for Vanessa. I mean, no better way to put it. Yeah. She is there's nothing really working for her right now. Um, you know, she's just kind of going down down that negative road, and the holes, like I said, they're not going to get any easier. The slopes aren't going to go even out. You know, she really has to now. It's it, you know, I'm hoping pars at this point for her at being plus eight. She's going to go to plus nine now. And Sarah doing that straddle you were talking about from even close right there. And barely gets that one to go in. I mean, those are just not easy even from, you know, that close. You can see the cameraman's probably sitting at about 30 foot away, 35 wow. feet. And it's straight uphill. You can see how gingerly she's walking down the hill. And they come off, you know, a really tough hole in hole 10. And now we're straight into hole 11, which is a similar hole. And instead of going left to right, you're almost going straight up the hill, though. So now we have another hill that you have to um, go up. And this one's sitting at 318 feet, more playing, more playing about 380 to 400, though, in elevation change. So no OB left, no OB right, but... If you're not in the fairway, the upshot's going to be definitely difficult because of the low ceiling. So you want to be more left of fairway instead of right in order to have an easier approach, Marty. But, I mean, this one's playing pretty tough as well as far as birdie. I'd be surprised if um, anybody had a birdie on this hole as we see uh, the scores. 
Paige was able to save par from where she landed on 18, which is surprising to me because it looked it looked pretty like she didn't get a lot of, right. a, a lot of distance off the tee. So great save for her. Um, Sarah Holcomb just you know chilling at two under. We're able to see that she's making good plays. You know she just tapped in from like a shorter distance and got it over the rim in order to save par. As our uh, the rest of our card is really struggling. I mean they're struggling for sure. Pages. Hanging on at plus two. Um, or no, actually, she just double bogey. Yeah. So she's yeah. at plus four. So, yes, definitely struggling. Um, Jessica Weiss at minus three. It, I'd kind of be surprised to see her go further than six or five. Conditions are perfect, though, it seems. Yeah, it's I not mean, too windy. There's a little bit out there. A little bit right of now. breeze, but yep. uh, the temperature looks good. doesn't look like, you know, anybody is uh, – struggling as far as that goes which we've seen in the past you know cold or too hot or something like that mm -hmm. um as we uh switch over to the live feed again we have sarah lining up that sidearm she's gonna play turnover like i said the further left you go it widens up the fairway that should be fine i mean it should yeah. probably be in the rough but um, she's also fairly tall. I mean, she's, mm -hmm. she's probably about my height, you know, five, 10, yep. five, 11 or something like that. Sure. Maybe even a little bit taller. So being able to stretch out, I mean, that is, that is an advantage for sure. sure. Yeah. You know, to have that reach, to be able to stretch out, especially with a sidearm. And she's got a pretty big wingspan too. Yep. And here is Liz a little bit too high. You know, for the for the power, I think that she has. I think a lower trajectory would have been a bit better there, as that one leaks a little bit left. Um, but she did get it left, so depending on her lie, she should have an upshot. You know, again, this one is there is a flat area up there that I think that Vanessa will probably be aiming at. Yeah, and that. You see how it was a little bit lower? Mm -hmm. And with that power, I think maybe a foot higher may have been better, but that was almost perfect height for, for the shot she was trying to throw there. And I think Paige, if she gets the circle mm. two, she turns that one over. This will be tough because once you get over, over to the right, that low ceiling comes into play and it, it becomes – very difficult to throw up the hill underneath those low ceilings to circle's yeah, edge. You know, good. it's very, very guarded. You know, we mentioned the weather, but we do see Sarah and a few others with umbrellas and it's definitely not raining. So uh, mm -hmm. heat could be, you know, come into play, but it is early. You yeah. know, they teed right. off fairly early. I think 9 a.m. Um, start time for them. So it should be pretty cool, I think, for um, our MPO live coverage, which definitely come back to check that out, guys. Uh, should be a bit hotter, and yes. maybe we'll see a little bit more water being consumed and things like that. But uh, so far, awesome coverage. You know, um, unfortunately, we had a couple cameras go down, but the camera crew, you know, that's out there working hard, uh, they're bringing us some good footage. And thank you guys for coming and watching with um, Marty and myself. And uh, yeah, we'll keep trying to give you, you the best we can possibly give you. Um, thank you to you, Dis, for all the stats and everything. Thank you, Johnny, in the booth for directing all of this for us. Uh, Sarah's walking up to check her approach, and they're probably looking for Paige's uh, errant yeah. tee shot there. Well, it might be the one time that her height is an advantage is when she does have yeah. that low ceiling. Very good point, you know? yeah. And here's... Sarah barely off the fairway and she's actually going to be throwing back in here back in approach you know once she gets inside 80 feet or so she definitely does throw that she has really good touch she does she looks like she executed that very well mm -hmm.
There's a good approach from Vanessa. Might have been a little bit short again. She might have, you know, that 15-foot tester. Um, but she definitely made sure right there to keep it underneath those branches, which was good. Make sure yeah. she got she got herself a putt. This is a good drive right here from Liz. She made it into circle two. We didn't see that from, you know, our other angle. And, and this is really, you know, she can give this one a good run. she doesn't even try to do so <laughs> Yeah, so Paige is going to actually cart a bogey right there. She's going to move to plus five on the round. Um, Liz is going to tap in par. She'll stay at plus four. This is a tough hole. I mean, it's only the 13th most difficult hole, Marty, but one, two on the card, and that was from um, Paige. So displaying that power that I was talking about to be able, you know, that's a huge advantage to have that power to even be able to have a look at holes like that. It is. Um, hole 12, 534 foot. This one is playing extremely down. This looks like, oh yeah, not that, not that big of a slope, but this one might be it, possibly one of the, I don't even know how you would say it, furthest downhill. Yeah. Yeah, furthest downhill. Yeah. Um, they're going to want to throw it. Down this hill, you see this tree on the right that we're going to go by. If you can throw something that somehow turns right here, lands underneath these branches, as you can see the basket come into play right there, come into your view, then you have to navigate this like really tight window all the way down to the hole. These women have the power to throw it down this hill and then have that turnover. Um, but I think uh, what they're going to try to do is is throw to that landing area back up that I that I was talking about and yeah. have that you know that tight alley down into um, down into the hole. Yeah, no one's parred this one today. No one's parred it. Or I mean, sorry, no one's no one's birdied it. Oh yeah, nobody. I mean, yeah, this is super tough birdie. I mean, it's a borderline par four. You know, when you get this one. Um, it definitely feels like Eagle. Yeah, when I glanced at it, I was expecting it to be a par four at 534 feet, but you got that 70 foot of elevation drop. Yeah, 70, there you go, 70 foot of elevation drop. I mean, that is an extreme um, difference in elevation. And, it is. and then uh, the fairway, once you get to that opening, is so tight. You know, it, a sidearm, if you have, if they have like that 400 foot power, a sidearm really plays well into that um, stable sidearm, something that can skip down there. But for backhand predominant players, which we see on this card, we have a lot of besides obviously Sarah, uh, no lefties on the card either. It's going to, it's going to play difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be a two shot hole for sure. I mean, to see a birdie on this hole, that would be like almost sports center. Stuff, <laughs> yeah. Honestly. <laughs> What would you normally try to throw on something like this? What would be your approach? I'd probably throw like a mid-range. You know, I think I threw mid-range in the past and try to get it to like throw it to a point to where then it kind of gives up and goes right. Okay. This is turned over too much. It's got to beat that tree. Yeah, that one went too far and and it went left. So she's going to be in the rough. And then once you go too far, Marty, mm -hmm. that's a tough angle to then try to go down the fairway. 
if you land anywhere past that little bushy spot in the middle of the fairway, you'll have some short shot in the green. Okay. And this is a flippy disc. We saw her throw it earlier. This is a great angle, actually. If this can somehow beat that tree, it does. Man, I wanted to see that one go all the way down. If it beats that tree, that one had a shot to going all the way. Wow. Yeah, that was a great angle. She's still going to be in, in good position because that's right by that tree. You know, yeah. down on the ground, she'll have putter approach probably into that. Um, It'll look like it dropped into the open four or two. Mm -hmm. And Vanessa's had trouble kind of getting these to turn over. You know, we saw her yank a couple. We saw, you know, one of them kind of leak left out of bounds. So let's see if she puts enough on this to get it to flip. And that's not going to flip. That's going to go straight and then left. And long. Yeah, and that's that's done yeah. like there's not a lot over there she's gonna have to pitch if she's smart she's gonna pitch back to the fairway uh to kind of where sarah is this one didn't turn over either i mean this is gonna be a rough a rough go Today, we'll be talking about the Nuke. The Nuke is a wide-rimmed, fast, maximum distance driver. When throwing on a wide open course with the Nuke, I'm using it to unleash maximum backhand distance potential. Due to its slim profile and wide rim, the Nuke also fits really well in the hand when throwing sidearms. If I'm looking to throw down some boom sauce, I'm going with the Nuke. You can pick one up at discraft.com or your local disc golf retailer. And here's that shot we said, uh, we saw uh, Sarah must have caught that guardian tree to the left. So <laughs> check out where she is. I mean, this is tough, man. She can bear, she can't see, over, there's no way she can see over those weeds. No. I mean, even the level of the ground, her, her hand is below the level of the ground. <laughs> yeah, she's going to have to throw, oh, this sorry. either is really stable or she's going to try a sidearm roller, I think. And it looked like that could have been a sidearm roller. It was a good tree, though. I think that one kept her right in the middle, so she'll be able to pitch down. The one thing about this hole, though, that I want to point out is it is a par four. It says par three, but this plays 100% for a par, par four. I mean, it is tough. Yeah. You're going to see as uh, I'll pull up the stat because I'm actually curious myself to – how hard this one actually is. Yeah, third most difficult. So this one's, you know, we're only seeing under 15 people 
take par on it, you know, and that, and that's a birdie score well, at that point when, yep. you know, a little bit, uh, eh, I don't know. It's, it's one of those tweener holes because, you, you know, we're sitting at about 30 competitors for the tournament. Yep. And, the, and so when, when half the field is taking par, half the take field is taking bogey, it's like right into that could be, you know, not really sure, yep. but there are no birdies. So, right. And the men and women are both playing the same tee pad on this one. Yep. Yep. So this one's definitely playing. Like I, like I said, even um, in the past when I've played this hole, you know, I've gotten it a couple times, but when you get it, it feels like Eagle. It yeah. definitely does. Liz looks like she's in a great spot. Yeah. This was an amazing drive landed like i said i think if it would have kept going it could have been even better but don't hit those branches she leaks it and hits the branches that's going to keep her out of circle one maybe even out of circle two just looked a little tentative on that throw and then the and then the top it off once you get to the green so one of the harder holes on the course to birdie but even if you throw let's say you throw a spectacular drive all the way down there to the um hole then you're going to have to do deal with one of the high rises that the pro tour offers <laughs> so they're making it extra tough so nothing's easy um in in golf as you know like you could have like the best drive ever and then you know have to deal with a 30 foot uphill put on a high rise you know you could still take bogey so yeah as we see them get through the course it's just playing tough you know, and that's the reason why there's rough, high rough. We saw Sarah off the fairway. You could barely see her, yeah. you know, <laughs> and she's barely off the fairway. And now um, at this camera angle, there is a person in the woods throwing right now. Just so you guys know, I promise there's somebody in there. I think it's Vanessa shot kind of went left, had enough power, but went left. And now she's going to have to try something. I mean. Just to, like I said, just to get it back to the fairway where Liz's tee shot was would be great. Yeah. yeah. There are um, back doors back there, though. Like, believe me, that's a the mistake she made there. That's not a rarity. That happens all the time. So people have definitely played in there, and there are routes to kind of get, you know, to the basket. They're just super tight and very unlikely. Yeah, she's looking back at the camera right now, which tells me she can't go towards the basket that she's going to be pitching out. See if the cameraman can get out of the way in time. <laughs> Ew, he heard me. Nice. <laughs> Over his head. Oh, <laughs> I, I had a feeling. Wow. Usually, usually the, you know, the competitor will be like, hey, coming in. But I think at this point, Vanessa, you know, maybe the care meter has gone uh, down a little bit as she's at plus nine you know, through, yeah. through this really tough part of the course and then another errant shot and then having the pitch out almost seemingly backwards, you know, it's tough to stay focused and stuff to um, have a positive outlook on it. And believe me, I, we've all been there. Yeah. And it's, and, and kind of rude for me to say her care meters down. I, I, yeah, obviously I have no idea. I, I mean, just like, Usually you say say something when you're throwing at a group. <laughs> and here she's lining up this this shot. And this is tight. This is a tight. She's in a spot where great up shot. Wow. Yes. And that's what we like to see right there. You know, instead of those branches kind of knocking her down, they let her through this time, and she's up there for a tap-in, stress-free tap-in. Yeah, of course, which definitely is good. Yeah. A little love. And like I said, this is playing as almost as almost a par par four. Mm -hmm. So she's able to 
to pitch out almost backwards, throw it up there, have stress free four, you know, uh, that's a that's a almost a normal score on this hole. Yep, it's going to be difficult when you're sitting in that spot, having a tough round, and then having to take your medicine like that and throw backwards uh -huh. and not force the shot through a, a really tight gap that you're. Yeah, it's, it's not easy to do. Yeah, it can definitely compound and and um, become worse. And plus plus you know she's sitting plus nine. Um, Paige is sitting plus five. Liz is sitting plus four. So if she can somehow, you know, let's say she gets two birdies coming, even mm -hmm. one birdie coming in, that's not far off the pace of the field. You're right. Still you know? a lot of golf left. Yeah. You're right. So, but, but she's on the border because if she gets, now let's say she goes the opposite way. She goes to, you know, plus 10, plus 11, plus 12, something like that. That is going to be tougher. Yes, you know, with the next few rounds to really make a jump into something, you know, that she's used to being in, which is, you know, those top fours we've been used to seeing her really jump up into those leader cards, second card and things like that. That is going to be tougher. Yep. So she has a lot on her plate right now. Um, this is for par. Give it to her. Oh. Man, that was deceiving, wasn't it? It, it was. I thought that, yeah, I thought that one was going in. But yeah, that's stress free tap in there. Yeah. But yeah, you know, to touch base on, you know, once you're once you get over par on a course where it's really hard to find birdies. Mm -hmm. You just gotta put a band-aid on it, you know. You yeah. gotta put a band-aid on it and then you have to just, you know, find a way, just find a way. Like you said, there is a lot of golf left. There's, you know, two more rounds, right. which is good. Um, but it can get a bit depressing when you look at the scoreboard and uh, there's a lot of people under par and you know you could easily be there. Um, as we go back to the live coverage, <laughs> there's Liz. It'd be nice to see her connect here. And that's the tough, yeah. And that's the yep. tough thing is getting the height on that. Yep, but it was right on target. Nice yeah, if she had a normal height, there would have been right in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying make right here. I'm feeling make. <laughs> Well, you know, Marty. She doesn't have a tap in to come back. She left a little meat on the bone. But she does it nicely. Yeah, very good stroke there. Great comebacker. Here's a, that's going to be a bogey. So she's, Sarah's going to move down to um, minus one, which is still a good score, but it goes without saying she'd, she'd want to hold on to minus two, but yes, you know, it, as we move through the course, hole 13, 516 feet, the course just, it just doesn't get really any easier for, for them. You know, this is going to play uh, out of bounds to the left, you know. Um, to get that far left, though, I'd be really surprised. You really want to land for the tee shots that they're going to want to land right about where that disc is to the left. You see that white dot, that's that's going to be where you want to go. And then once you land there, your approach shot's going to be hyzering into the basket and it's pretty well guarded. I mean, you have a tree to the right, you have a tree to the left, and then a low ceiling, and then it's almost in a in a setting of a, like a 30-foot setting, or not even that, even tighter than that, a 20-foot setting into this like little crevice that you have to kind of punch into. It plays to your advantage if you get far enough up the fairway because then you can just play stable and then, mm -hmm. you know, use that hillside. You know, you can throw it as hard as you want. You're never going to go deep. So that could be helpful. 
but um that saying that you get all the way up to fairway and you have that you know that right. um easy approach in again elevation straight yeah. uphill so Another 50 feet of elevation gain yeah I, th I think i actually i feel like i know if there can't be any other course with more elevation than this it just can't i mean every hole there hasn't been one flat hole every yeah. hole is up or down And this is coming in as the third easiest hole. So um, playing fairly easy, but then we are only seeing two birdies on the hole before this round, Paige right. and Tiger Borth. So not a lot of birdies. We're seeing a lot of pars, though. Um, we're not seeing very many bogeys. We only have four over par strokes on the whole entire hole for the whole entire FPO division. So tough hole you know, to bogey. Um, I think I'm, I think we'll see a birdie though. I'm going to say it. I don't agree with you. I'm who's going to birdie though. Yeah. I, Sarah, the way she's playing. That's a tough birdie for Sarah because once you get up the fairway, you know, playing that sidearm into the, um, from right to left is going to be tough. Valid point, but she might break out that backhand she's been working on. Or just throw a nice little sidearm turnover up there. That's Who true. knows? I'd like to see Vanessa. I'd like to see Vanessa get the bird, but. I agree. <laughs> oh, well, there's a good caddy just sweeping off the tee pad for them all. It can get, that's another thing. It can get dusty on those tee pads and make it a bit slippery. So it's definitely important for the, you know, the, on the tee shot is going to be the only shot that you throw on level ground. So make it count, right? Right, right. I know with this temporary course, the uh, they put in a lot of work trying to make these tee pads as flat as possible and clean for everybody. And it's hard to tell, but once you get off that mode area, it's also kind of a, a on a hillside, like an, um, from left to right. That is obviously you're on a hillside going straight up, but from left to right, it slopes that way as well. So it's really important to be in the middle of the fairway just so that you have a stance um, where you can negotiate some sort of power stance up the fairway um, into the green. Hmm. Moving one. Looks like she's getting off into that rough. And that um, rope to the right is actually inbound, so it's not out of bounds. It's just going to be pretty far from the basket. Right. The new OB ad was to the left, huh? And that's new this year? Yep. That's going to be the similar OB line as whole. I think it's the same OB line as whole three. So they're sharing that OB line, and that's not good from Vanessa to the right there. This needs to flex out and they're all making that same mistake to the right. Now, here's the thing. Once you go right, it actually opens up into the green, but the trick is you don't have a run up. So then you're going to lose power. So I'm not sure if they're going to have the power to get to the green from there, even though it does open, open that up a bit. And here's a nice, view of uh, the property as you see the, the those big trees in the background and it looks like a little bit of an overcast now so that could keep them cooler in this toboggan course it's settled in a park with a lot of other amenities in this area correct oh yes this this park is really big and you know if you want to come out just to spectate which i i highly suggest um coming out supporting your favorite players in the fbo division along with our later tea times but uh you know if you have a specific group that you'd like to see you come into the park and then you know map out that tea 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 time and then go check out one of those amenities that you said you know there's a lot of lakes there's 
bike um bike tracks there's walking paths there's you know all kinds of different things that you can do there there's also an actual traditional golf course oh really um pretty close to the property so you can go uh you know hit a bucket if you want before you're before playing around a disc golf i mean this uh, beautiful park with um lots of natural nature as well great place for a picnic They're going to have a tough time kind of even finding these ones um, to the right there because the rough is so tall that the tall grass, you know, is three feet high. So mm -hmm. it looked pretty easy from the tee pad to find your disc. But once you get up there, it's it's tough. Yeah, go on the Easter egg hunt again, I guess. And now a good shot from here would be just almost to the top of the hill. I think without a run up. And you, throwing straight up hill, this is tough because you see the high grass and in order to throw high, you got to put your disc down and then go straight up. Right. And you can't do that here. Because as soon as you put it, well, you can, but as soon as you put it down, you're touching grass, and that's just super uncomfortable. Yeah. Didn't see where that exactly ended up, but my, my, that looked pretty good. Maybe to the top yeah. of the hill. It did. And this is right at about that distance where I think a perfect shot for Sarah could get up into that green. You know, if she gets the height right, she's going to have to throw almost full power. And that was almost perfect. She needed a bit more height, and that would have got all the way there. Wow. A strong effort. Yeah, it's just so high up there. And to have the power to get all the way up there and then not, you know, um, drift to the right or not throw it with too much turn to the left, like it's – it's hard. Yeah. Great shot from Paige. You got up there on the flat ground, looks like on Circle's Edge. Yeah, and she was able to um, take a run up there to get a little bit uh, extra power. Um, as we see, Liz actually take a standstill approach. And that's a little bit too nose up. But pretty good. I mean, yeah. able to, you know, and that's why we're seeing a lot of pars on this hole is because a lot of people are going to throw it um, to their first drive to about the distance where all, you know, all, all the ladies were. And then from there, the power without a run up is going to end up just to the top of the hill. Right. Makes sense. It looks like they almost all go up top. Yeah, they all they all made it about to the top of the ridge there. I'm I'm curious to see where Vanessa's ended up. Oh, there she is. She ended up right in the middle of the fairway. Another thing to note is and that's perfect. Another thing to note is walking up these hills. I mean, that'll tire you out going up and down and up and down. You have to be in great shape to maintain a level of uh, um, high intensity play, you know? Sure. Uh, be because it, if you're not used to that short, sort of terrain, 
it can really it can really take a toll on you, oh, yeah. especially over a three day tournament. Yep, and by the time you get up to your disc, if you are winded, it's going to be that much tougher to execute your shot. That was a great run right there. So I said that we'd see a birdie. And we need help. <laughs> We're going to need a little help from Sarah here. Maybe throw a sidearm zinger at it. Low ceiling, no troubles behind it. All right? Yep. Be a heck of a putt if she does hit it. Looks like she might try the the straddle jump putt. She's got that rope in her line too to add a little bit of complexity to it. Yeah. Maybe she should jump on it to give her a little extra <laughs> juice. Sling her forward. Technically she could. It's behind her line, correct? Yeah. You can <laughs> use it as a rubber band. <laughs> little swing and come on oh yeah. just didn't get the height oh yep. yeah oh she, she didn't like it <laughs> she said the spring didn't work <laughs> uh we were on the same page that's nice uh and it's gonna take a miracle for us to get the birdie but we saw um page throw the sidearm on that shorter putt, um, ended up getting that bad roll, and now she jump putts, gives it good height. I mean, they gave it good bits. Her and Liz yeah. gave it good heights there. So I wonder if that's taken a toll on Paige as well, having such a quick uh, um, routine. Right. And then walking up these holes, maybe being t tired, but then having to go fast. Just a thought. Good to see everybody clean up here. Hole 14, 375 feet. This is a gettable hole. This is a definitely, probably, I would say, the easiest um, birdie on the course. If there's one that you want to get, it's this one. Hole 14, yeah, down this. This is the slowest drone I've ever seen in my life. But as you can see, where the fairway, the mowers have done a great job, um, way better than that shot of showing you how the fairway goes here to the left and down into this little alleyway. Um, the tough thing is, is, is there are guardian trees around the basket and then the basket is gonna be on, on another high rise. So it, it'll be a tough putt, but the thing about it is you can th pretty much throw any disc you want out of your bag and get have the distance to be able to get to this hole. It's, so. It's playing as the third easiest hole. Okay. Averaging 3.06, and we've seen uh, four birdies so far on it. Okay. Oh. Sarah going backhand. I think I think we're definitely gonna we're at least gonna see some putts here for birdie. And that was, so you can get a look if you go behind those guardians that she hit or if you go in front of them. Unfortunately, she didn't do either. So that's going to be a tough fly, but there is a route behind those that can kind of get all the way down there. I think, I think Liz has played here so many times that this is going to be one that, you know, she kind of knows, um, 
the right height to, to throw this one on to get it all the way down to the pin. And this looks pretty good. Oh, and she just catches that guardian. If See, if she misses that yeah. guardian, that thing's down there, circle's edge. I think she threw it a, a little too high, though. A little bit. In my, in my opinion, yeah. Little, huh? I think if you look at the skyline, that's about the height that you're going to want. Anything above that skyline will be a little bit too high. There, this one's good. This is gonna be this is gonna be circle's edge. Oh, and it it still might have got down. Man, that's so surprising to me that that one didn't filter more. It looked perfect. This one looks like it caught. Me, I don't know. That one might have made it to the circle. We'll have to see on that. I've had I've had mixed shots with this hole. I've I almost lost my disc one time because I went <laughs> I threw it a, a, a mid range kind of high and I floated all the way down past the past the pin. But let's go to commercial because nobody wants to hear about that. <laughs> I'm Matt Paxton, extreme cleaning expert from TV's Hoarders. People turn to me when they have big challenges. When it comes to making commercial and office buildings look their best, big jobs require big help. When you need your cleaning services to keep your employees working in a professional environment, you can count on the Service Master Clean experts to get the job done with consistent, thorough, and absolutely reliable service every time. Service Master Clean, where the experience matters. And Sarah caught, you know, those guardians on the left there, and she's going to have to try sidearm roller to get around these trees. She put herself into a spot, you know, that's so difficult. She has to go to the ground to try to save par. Wow, this course definitely tests every shot in your bag. And that one didn't turn, just went too straight. <laughs> it's funny, you, you throw a sidearm roller that's cutting left on a slope and it decides to go straight. <laughs> You're just like, what am I supposed to do? The rest of them are gonna make their way to their lives, try to find them. This is one that sometimes there's a spot or sometimes there's not. So it's 50-50 shot. And it's easy to lose your disc on this hole because it's, it's blind, you know? Once you get by there, if you get stuck two meters or something, um, with a camouflage disc or something like that, it can get tough. 
Vanessa throws sidearm approach, catches the tree. We'll see how close she actually is. That might be another tester for her. I want to thank Discraft for sponsoring the event. Obviously, being Michigan, definitely Discraft country, and we've seen a lot of work go into these courses uh, for the last couple of weekends. You know, this um, pro tour um, needs a lot of help from all kinds of different avenues. And thank you to Discraft for providing um, everything that they do. Uh, thank you to you, Disc, for obviously providing us with a, a platform to give you guys stats and all those different things savage um apparel for my new shirt making me look good in the booth here appreciate them and for all their sponsorship to the pro tour as sarah lines this up so she goes sidearm roller and then has to go sidearm turnover spread out to get it you know up to the basket so she's gonna it's coming in as a you know the third easiest hole mm -hmm. but then he, you know, we're, we're seeing a definite bogey from Sarah. She's going to go to even par now. And he, I, I'm guessing that Paige is going to run this even though. And I, I said in the um, whole preview that there was going to be a high rise, but it doesn't look to be the case. No. Looks like a, just a normal basket. Oh, oh, again, running with the sidearm. She got great touch with that shot. Yeah, I mean, she's drawing metal every time she's thrown it so far. Yeah, this is definitely not a gimme. Nope. She's got this one. Yes. And that was a good catch on the left side. Hole 15, 400 feet, OB on the left. Uh, you can see this high, the high grass on the left there. That's all going to be um, out of bounds. And then as you go down this hill, you can see the um, basket come into view here. So left OB, and it plays... This place is make a, a, a makeable shot for them because of the downhill. Um, the 400 feet turns into about 370, which I believe that they all are going to have the distance to be able to get there. Uh, and as the drone was flying, it was about, I would say, 200 feet further is the T pad that we'll actually be using. Um, and Paige with that minus four, that's looking really good, you know. Uh, Katrina at m minus one and, and, you know, Madison coming in early with that minus one and that's in second place now. Yeah. So. Sarah's taking over the caddy duties there. It looks <laughs> like. Her caddy's slacking. She's yeah. Those brooms are funny. Uh, the last time I was there, they had different, little nicknames on every single one of them <laughs> for the brooms. Uh, one of them was Broom Goes the Dynamite. Is that Dana Vichy's? Uh, or Vichy's? Yeah, maybe. I think on uh, as we come to the tee pad, Liz has taken the box. This needs to turn. turn. Oh, that, that was a great height. If it could have turned a little bit more, I think that one could have got all the way there. Yeah, she threw um, that smooth. Yep. 
As soon as you go past the hillside, though, the out of bounds kind of stops, and then you're able to go left. You can see the OB line there on the left with those white stakes. Those and trees in the way, it really does bring that OB into play, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. You really want to make sure that you hit that gap. If you hit those trees on the left, that's out of bounds. But if you can get past them, this is good. If this flexes out, this could be circle's edge. Yeah. Yeah. And that's going to be right there on the base. That was a perfect shot. Use the whole fairway from left to right, back right in the middle. This is a shot that Paige's game, it really suits Paige's game, being, sh you know, really straight shots with a small turnover. I suspect that, yeah, that she's going to eat this one for lunch. Money. Yep. She's deadly. Once you get in the woods, straight shots like that, she's really great at hitting her initial gap. Um, she's known to throw a lot of putters as well, doesn't she? Yeah, I mean, she's a world champion. She's got it all. But I think if you were to ask her, she would say, yeah, I favor the woods. I can throw this disc around the world in one shot. Never play disc golf too far into the jungle. There may be cheetahs. Someone on your card can't recall if they threw a six or a seven. It was probably an eight. B. Stay getting birdied, my friends. Hey, everybody, this is Kevin Jones. I'm here with my brand new Prodigy VP3 V2 backpack. And I'm loving this thing a lot. It's extremely lightweight. It's carrying all the discs I could ever ask for. It's pretty sturdy and durable. I've got my two putters up here, no problem. Room for a towel if need be. It's really lightweight, it's extremely efficient. And for all you, it's extremely affordable. So come check it out. And it looked like Sarah kind of just laid this one up, you know? Didn't want to play with the OB to the left and said, you know, I can make this a two-shot hole, get my par, and get out of here. Yep. She's sitting at even par. Second place is one under par. Mm -hmm. So right. she's right there. She's right in the mix of this tournament, right there. Rest of the competitors really need really need to take, you know, take those pars. Um, Put it into perspective, though. Liz is plus five, okay? Mm -hmm. Minus one is in second place. She's right there. She is. You're right. You know, six back, that's nothing. You go on a four-hole streak where all of a sudden you get four birdies in a row. All yep. of a sudden she's, you know, You're making she's some right big there. Moves. Yeah. 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 And that's totally doable for all of them. And, and that same goes for Vanessa. If she goes, she, let's say she gets four in a row tomorrow. All of a sudden, plus five, you know, she's right on pace for that lead card status, I think, for the weekend. Right. Or for um, Sunday. But it does take them actually doing that. Let's get some birds here. Yes. She's got this. Come on. And just leaves it a little bit short. See, you make you make the green, and then you have this straight up hill putt that plays as 40 feet, you know? It's just they're not getting any breaks. No. This 
this course has teeth, but it's not, you don't see big numbers on any one hole. It's you just kind of generally bleed yeah. hole after hole after hole. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. It just kind of gives you little tiny slices until all of a sudden, you know, you're really hurt. It makes me sound extra smart saying what you said, just a little bit different. <laughs> well played, sir. Well played. <laughs> oh, man. What do we got here, Marty? I can't even. Uh, hole 16, 354 feet, pretty much straight ahead with about an 18 feet elevation gain going uphill. Yeah, and then as the drone flies, this is the gap that you want to hit you're going to want to hit something that's slightly turned over and then somehow beats this tree to the right and gets through this gap super tight gap i mean um it takes a, an, an exact shot really to get through here there is a sidearm route um but it's a little bit tighter and tougher to navigate that fairway uh as as we move forward into the round um we can see that those scores are getting a little bit more manageable like we said I thought at the beginning of the round that those you know there was like a three down a four down and a five down and I thought as they move forward that was going to be tough to maintain and I didn't mm -hmm. think that they were going to get much lower than that and then uh, as we see that come into reality not a lot of scores you know dipping into that under par mark no I mean Paige with four down in the clubhouse Here's Liz. Liz is, you know, taking the box and she hasn't given it up in a couple holes, you know, and that's just showing you she's not birdieing. She's just getting pars and and pars. Pars are going to be tough from that lie. <laughs> but, you know, pars are good on this course. Really good. Yeah. Well, we've uh, seen three birdies on this hole so far today. Lauren Butler. Ellen Windboom and Madison. Oh, those are great birdies. Yeah, that's um, surprising to only see three things how it's totally gettable. This is too low. And that's going to be directly behind those bushes. That'll be a tough stretch for her either way. Oh, no. And I mean, you couldn't get a... a you kind of hit that tree more center. No. Tree's definitely a little bit of a plastic magnet today. But the reason that tree's coming into play is because if you push the envelope a little bit left, it opens up that fairway once your disc turns over and you're able to kind of get in towards the basket. So I see the reason why that, that tree is coming into play. I mean, from the viewer, you're thinking, how are they missing left? You know, but you really want to throw left in order to get that late turn to get through the fairway. And I think that one's a little bit too high. And she's going to be in the rough. just shot and another tree yeah and that's the one that she really had to you know miss i mean if she misses left or right there that it's home free but unfortunately she hit the first tree and then 
you know, had a similar shot going in, you know, she didn't make it very far up the fairway. So she had a similar shot going into the green and that's going to be tacking on another bogey. Don't think she was happy with that one. Yeah, it doesn't look like the biggest gallery I've seen for a featured card over in Michigan. So if you're listening at home and you're in the Michigan area, get up and go out and support. Um, I know one thing's for sure when, when there's big crowds out there and that energy can definitely push uh, cards to do a little, uh, a lot better, in yeah. fact, and get them into the zone and stuff. And, you know, um, having those fans and things out, out there for, those reasons is very important so if you have favorite players or something um definitely make your way out to uh support support them and give them a little bit more motivation to play well everything helps as far as that goes Looks like she wasn't comfortable with the jump putt and she's gonna elect to throw this one. One of the storylines for today, Marty is that Liz made it on this card through um, the fan vote. So uh, that's great to see, you know, somebody, a local from the area, you know, get that sort of support and, and to to beat out, uh, to beat out Paige, I believe, and, yep. and Katrina. I mean, that says a lot about uh, the fans that Liz has, and um, to be able to make this feature card. I mean, that's a feat in itself. And, Very true. And she's got a solid round going as well. Oh yeah, yep, for sure. She's showing that uh, you know she knows this course. She really hasn't. She hasn't taken a, a really crazy big score. You know, like you said earlier, she just taking a couple bogeys here and there, which really aren't bogeys because of how hard those holes play. Um, and that pitch is out to about 20, 20 feet. Um, she have a little tester. Yep. It also shows the importance of have as a professional athlete, having a social media platform, having a social media, you know, that's definitely a tool to be able to push your career forward and different things like that. You know, as um, the sport progresses, as um, Liz lines up this 20 footer. And that's the first one we've seen her miss today. She's yeah. been really solid from about that distance, but that one got the best of her. But, you know, as the sport moves forward, it's definitely important to have that um, social media presence for things just like this. I mean, if you do a lot for your fans, they're going to support you and they're going to get you on more featured cards and, and different things like that we see. Uh, I 
that's a good putt. You yep. know, somebody that comes to mind who is really one of the pioneers of that is Avery Jenkins. Yes. Yep. You know, he was able to um, maintain a certain popularity throughout his whole career uh, because of that. And he really, you know, kind of set the standard for everybody to show, you know, show that it, that's important. And now we're seeing it more, you know, with like the likes of the Eagle doing all of his uh, – um, blogs and Seppo and um, even uh, Kona has a big social media presence and we see her get a lot of votes and different things like that. So if you're an up and comer, uh, that's definitely a way for you to, you know, push your brand and, and become more popular. Uh, heading into hole 17, 630, you know, foot of distance. Uh, OB left in this little pocket to the left there so if you don't turn it over that could come into play uh this one once you throw your tee shot let's say you throw it in the middle of the fairway you're gonna have another shot straight up the hill um you're gonna see a lot of i think sh second shots end up a little bit left because of that pine tree coming into play as i look at a couple stats here um looks like still uh looks like final scores in for katrina minus one madison walker minus one and then a bunch of even par so if sarah could somehow manage to get another birdie she'll secure her spot on a feature card tomorrow and the lead card which is more important than just being on a feature card. true true uh but a lot of people kind of right there lisa comes in at plus mm -hmm. two two strokes off of that you know, pace and local Sarah DeMar down on hole 17 at plus four. But we see on our card, Liz at plus uh, six a, now. Yep. And that's, you know, that's two out of top 10. So that's not bad. Nope. Not as we move forward. Yep. Um, as we go to the T here. Oh, this looks nice. She throws. Yeah, that's a good shot. I mean, that's going to play far up the hill, though. Yeah, it is. That OB really comes into play on that right hand, backhand shot. Uh -huh. And Sarah doing a little bit more cleaning. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. It does look like things are heating up a little bit. She's wiping her hands a little bit more. Yeah, maybe sweating a bit because yep. of the humidity. It does definitely gets humid out there. She's going to play out over the OB, so this could be pretty dangerous. Ooh, comes back inbounds, though. And this is another hole that it says par four. But in order to have the distance to get all the way up that hill for birdie, I mean, you have to have a tremendous amount of power, Marty. And, yeah. and we're looking at, if we look at the stats, there's no birdie threes on this hole. So par, so four is a great score for for um, for this card. And, and you see Paige takes all the OP out of play, but then ends up in the rough to the right there. Uh, she's been a little bit sporadic with her tee shots, it seems like, today mm -hmm. and, and putting. So she we'll is. look for her to make her way up the leaderboard in our next um, uh, live broadcast. As That's a perfect shot. That was beautiful. I mean, it ended up into the rough a little bit. But, I mean, plenty of distance, and that's going to be in the best position. Yep. Yeah.
So now, now that Paige, you know, went a little bit right, she's going to have to go around this tree, hopefully, get around it. And she does. So now she'll have about 150 feet up the hill to secure par. So that was a that was a good shot from where she was. She was no way was. off the fairway to be able to get around that. Hopefully, past those bushes, she'll have she'll have a shot up the hill. But there, I, there's not going to be any birdies on this on this card. It's just too far up the hill. I mean, that's from where Sarah is. It's playing 430, probably 450. And that was perfectly flexed all the way, and she's still not in circle two. <laughs> I mean, that's 630 feet uphill, too. Yeah, it's, it's playing really far. With OB on the left, I mean, um, credit to the course designer. That OB definitely comes into play from that tee pad for this division, you know? Yes. If you saw Sarah just barely clear it. You saw Liz barely clear it. You saw... Vanessa barely clear it. And then you saw Paige make sure to go way right. So it's definitely a noticeable difference from previous years. Get out of that bush. And that's just Van Vanessa's round. It is her day. Yeah. It's, it's her just, day. Yeah, she just ends up going directly in the middle of that bush. Hopefully it pushes to one side or the other so she'll be able to push forward a little bit, but that's going to be tough to save par from there. It will be. And Liz had a great drive. So she had such a good drive. She might be able to make her way possibly to circle one. What do you think? I would love to see it. Cause I mean that was a that's a far drive. That was a crush. She got okay footing. She's thrown her flippy disc, so I like seeing that. If she puts enough hyzer on it, she doesn't. No, nah, she's gonna ah, have a look. yeah. She's gonna have a look. That was good. If she put a little bit more hyzer on that disc, I mm -hmm. think it would have pushed up a bit higher and maybe even made it to the top of the hill because that had more that had more distance on it if it would have been a bit higher she had all the power to get all the way there just looking at you disc i don't think we've seen a birdie on this hole no no we haven't nope and it's playing as the third most difficult hole so it's it's definitely tough. I mean, we're we're seeing a few bogeys as well. Um, some notable players: Re Rebecca Cox, uh, Lisa, um, Jessica. You know, we saw all bogey in this hole. So fives in play. You know, yeah. we see Vanessa in this bush. It, as you can see, that it looks smaller from where we were at the camera angle. Now look at it. <laughs> It's a gigantic, this isn't your typical, oh, yeah, you threw it into a bush. I'll just do a little standstill. Like, <laughs> they had a miracle grow on these bushes out here in Michigan. It's definitely the course of a thousand cuts. Yeah. It's just a slow death. I don't even know if they see it. It went in there pretty high. You can see them all hesitant to even go in there. They're like, uh, I think it's in there. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like they might have found it. It looks like she's gonna. I mean, it would be nice, but I mean, I think she's saying that she can't get in there and and throw, so she wants to take her previous lie. Wow. 
know. Well, it just goes right back in there. <laughs> See, and I don't like this play, Marty, because I think she's just frustrated yep. in this moment. I think she just didn't even want to make an attempt to get in there and grab it. But we saw Liz go in there and just grab it, you know, and bring it straight out and hand it to her, to where if she could have done that, then you can get your foot in there. You can take a knee, you can pitch out backwards, and then you can navigate your way back up to, you know, that's doable. For right, you. right. So I think this is just a sign of frustration to me to where, you know, she's, she's almost in the, well, well, what am I supposed to do? You know? Exactly. And like I mean, just frustration. Th yeah. She's thrown four from way back there now. Yeah as opposed to just pitching out and throwing forward from up there. Right. And that's just, you know, I've been, I've been there to where it's just like, well, it doesn't matter. You know, sure. this stroke doesn't matter at this point. Like I, I can go back there and throw, I can go back right here. And I think, you know, it's our job to debate what she does. Right. So I'm not there. So I have no idea what that lie actually did look like, but you know, sure. No, I, I that's agree. my assessment. Yeah. Let's hope she gets past it this time. Yes. Yes. It looks like she got past it, but it might be even on the front side of it again to where it's going to be hard to have the height to get up to that hill. Because yeah. as we saw, that bush was huge. Great shot by Paige. Sarah going to lean on that backhand again. It seems like we've noticed once she gets in into, you know, about 100 feet, she really likes that. I think she can kind of get that nose up and land and land it really soft, not really, you know, take a few variables out of the sidearm, which, you know, it's really tough to have that sort of touch inside True. 100 feet. And, and Vanessa did make it past the bush. So if she can get up and down, you know, that's the same thing as if she were to pitch backwards and then made it up the hill. So possibly a good, possibly a good decision there. Yes. You know, she, she makes that up there. She's going to make that putt and, you know, same result as if she would have just put a foot in there, thrown it backwards, then got up and down. Right. I think. Is my math right? We'll go with it. Hmm. I'm second guessing myself. Beautiful. Birdie. What a putt. That's going to take her back to plus six. That was much needed. That was an awesome birdie there. I mean, you know, we said when the hole started, I didn't think I was going to see a birdie on this hole. and She proved you wrong. Yeah. Love like that. It. I think that one might have rolled as well. You just want to see things turn for her, though. Yeah, I mean, you never, you never want to see a, a player struggle um, on one of these cards. But the one thing we do know about Vanessa is uh, she's a great player, and she'll be just fine. Just doesn't just doesn't feel like it for her probably right now, you know. Yeah, it looks like she didn't roll. Or yeah, it looks like she sat down. Good. Luckily. There you go.
Full 18s, 315 feet. Uh, they got the new OB line, or it's actually the same OB line they had last year along that fence line. It's going to dog leg to the right, and there's 52 feet of elevation gain going uphill. So that's going to play much longer than 315. Paul, what do you like to throw on this hole? You know, I actually go, I actually go roller on this. I have really? a really, yeah, I have a really flippy disc in my bag. I call it my get out of jail free card. It's like yeah. a paper plate. Paper plate, yep, <laughs> yeah. Yep. And I like throwing that here, but I don't, you know, we saw Liz throw a roller uh, earlier in the round, so she definitely has that in her arsenal, but I'm not, I don't think I could see them throwing roller off of this tee pad. I think they're all just going to try to. Oh, nope, Liz is going to go with the roller. I'm calling it. It's that same Avenger SS that she rolled. Oh, I'd love it. And she made me a liar. And that was a great shot, though. I mean, that's up the hill, turning with the slope. Um, I think she, I think she just showed us what the rest of the card will want to do. I think Holcomb has an advantage of just throwing the hyzer, you know, through that gap, kind of hyzer flip up. Um, I said on the last hole, I, will, I didn't think I'd see any birdies. And I'm going to say it again. I don't think I'm going to see any birdies on this hole. So hopefully they all get birds. Eighth most difficult. So kind of right in the middle, you know, no birdies on the hole yet. Mm, a lot of pars. Some, you know, a few, few bogeys spr sprinkled into to the field, but as long as you make this gap and you don't go out of bounds, it should be good, good for par. Good for but the, uh, like we said, the name of the game here is elevation, elevation, man. Yep. Up and down and up and down. Sarah's sitting right now in a three-way tie for fourths. So that last spot on the lead card. Nicely done. Yep. That's something. Do you prefer going into day two? Would you prefer to be on the lead card or second card? Oh, lead card. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. I think um, I think people who say as does that that's not going to turn over and hits the top of the wall and unfortunately that's going to be out of bounds. Oh. But I think people who say, oh, I'd rather do the sneak attack. I think that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever <laughs> heard <laughs> because I would rather be as much under par as possible. Makes sense. Now, if the whole card is tied for first. Then I would say, yeah, maybe second card might have a little advantage, you know, without the gallery or something. But I, I always want to be in the bed. I want to be in first. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Vanessa throwing sidearm, and this was nicely thrown. Yeah, that was good. That Went was the run well. up up the hill, came out smooth, very little wobble. That was awesome. Flattened first, out. First sidearm I've seen her throw. Yeah, that was great. There has been some players historically that have you know just bust out that sidearm whenever they need it, like Nate Doss, for example. Not known as a sidearm player, but when he needed it, he could execute it well. Yeah. Oh, Paige, Paige <laughs> does that sometimes. She'll just throw those nice putter up shots and scare the basket. We saw her do that earlier in the round too. Super accurate with that inside, you know, 150 feet. She is deadly. 
and Sarah just outside of that backhand touch range we like she likes to be at. Just give it a go. And it looks like they've gained a few spectators as they walk up the hill, which is good through the round. You know, the, uh, I know if the camera would go off to the right, there's definitely people watching because this is obviously the finishing hole. and. A lot of people gather themselves up um, to watch finishing cards and just nice relaxing spot. You a lot of vending over there and, you know, score tables and different things like that. Um, hole one is also to the right there. So people will be warming up all around there. Um, unfortunately, we see Vanessa, you know, was not able to write, write the ship at all, uh, even on that back nine, and she's going to, uh, tap in for another bogey. But here's Sarah. And this is for a spot on the lead card. Yep. And she's got it. You know, that's one thing about Sarah that I've always admired is she's very clutch. She has a clutch putt. It's not... A, or it's a kind of an orthodox putt in mm -hmm. my opinion, mm -hmm. but the one thing that she's been able to do throughout her, her career is make a lot of putts for the win. A lot of, you know, I remember her um, world championship. She won. She made a sick putt. Yeah, um, she did in Pittsburgh. Yep. 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 Um, yeah, I think it was uh, Carolina. She won. It was Carolina. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, let's close this thing out. Well, that's gonna be it for our for our coverage. I mean, we had a lot of we had a lot of different stories going on through this mm -hmm. round. Um, if we could pull up the the scoreboard here, you know, Paige comes in with a minus four. Um, Madison Walker came in with minus one early, mm -hmm. and that one held up all the way. You know, she was dipping off the lead card on the lead card, and now she's sitting in second place. Katrina comes in with a solid one under par. She's tied for second place. Um, our on our feature card, a lot of them struggled. I mean, it really got to show us for this first round how hard the course really was. Yep. You know, yep. and how thick the rough is. How the OB definitely comes into play. You know, if you push away from the OB on this course that rough is brutal. And yep. so that was nice to see. Unfortunately, you know, three of our uh, players on the card kind of struggled, but you know, our bright spot was Sarah Holcomb who was able to just play very smooth, very unassuming, you know, it was two down early, but then, you know, kind of padded that throughout the whole round and ended up being even and she'll be on the lead card for tomorrow. So a lot of good things happened today. Uh, the weather held up great. Um, camera you know a couple of our cameras went down and then it was almost like i didn't even notice because they did so well so shout out to our camera crew shout out to um you disc for all the um stats we were able to give you guys uh anybody who helped out discraft of course and main sponsor of this event and uh pro the pro tour of course and that's going to be it for our coverage great we're going to see you guys in a little bit for the men